What's up, everybody? Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 71, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowth, and as usual, I'm joined by my two good friends and co hosts, Raffle and Bucketman Corbett, over here with his logo. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, you know what? I'm doing all right. I'm uh, back from my weekend away in the mountains, feeling refreshed to feeling good. And uh, actually, we were just talking about looking forward to another break because we've got a holiday coming up next week. But uh, we've also got new cards. I returned to an expansion announcement, and uh, that was much better than last year when I returned to a just nightmare scenario with the uh, the Battle Pass uh, mm. when <laughs> I went on a similar vacation at the same time of year. And it was a little bit better to come back to uh, to new cards. So. Uh, I know we've got Corb as a disembodied voice this week, but uh, how is Ghost Corb doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, you know, you came back from the mountains. I don't know what happened to me, but I just ended up with this bucket on my head. I don't know where my camera went. Like, oh, it, it, it's so confusing. But very, very happy to be here talking with you guys about all the new content. Yeah, the, light, the lights are right. You can see all the new cards, right? Underneath that bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> all right. So, like we've kind of alluded, uh, strap in, guys. It's going to be a long episode like all of our card review episodes are, but we've got 46 cards that we're going to be talking about. Some of them we're going to be talking about just a little bit longer uh, than others. Um, so lots of, lots of exciting news, but before we get into all that, we do have to take care of our housekeeping stuff. As usual, if you guys enjoy the podcast, whether you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anything like that, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. It's a small thing, but it does actually support us a ton. You can also support the podcast by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash state of wild, and uh, you've got an opportunity for some sweet perks as well. And you can always come join the State of the Wild uh, Discord server when you want to come talk about all things wild, Hearthstone, as part of the community. All right, so let's uh, not wait any further. Let's hop into these new cards. Um, so we'll start off. We're going to go class order. Uh, if you guys want to skip ahead to a specific class, as usual, there will be time steps down below, so you can check out uh, whichever class you're the most interested in, or you know, we'd appreciate it if you listen all the way through to all, all the classes. Listen to listen to us talk for two hours. You know, make, make us feel special. Uh, but let's start about Demon Hunter. So Demon Hunter looks like it's getting... Um, two major themes pushed this expansion. Um, so we've got some token demon hunter and we've got some big demon hunters. So let's start with some of these token demon hunter cards first. And let's start off with the giant in the room. Let's talk about Urzul Giant. We finally have a 13 mana card. I don't think we've ever seen this before. Um, 13 mana, 8-8 eight, eight demon. Cost one less for each friendly minion that has died this game. Important distinction, right? Quarter Keeper was all minions. This is, they have realized their mistake. This is only friendly minions. Um, so yeah, so this energizes all the like, Demon Hunter's a bunch of three, four, five, seven mana spells that summon a bunch of tokens. Um, lots of tokens energy already printed and here today. Um, we always have to keep an eye out for giants, right? Because anything that can cause zero and has eight, eight stats or something to be potentially scared of in our format. Um, should we be scared of Token Demon Hunter? No. Uh, it's a, it, like, the, my two favorite Demon Hunter decks are Token Demon Hunter and Big Demon Hunter. Um, I don't think the, the cards that we're seeing right now are going to make either of those competitive. That said, I'm really excited about this card in particular because uh, what that deck is missing is, like, big uh, threats like this. Um, but, I, I mean, I doubt this is the card that pushes that, <laughs> that deck into, into relevance. I mean, uh, Demon Hunter isn't really a class. Oh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, this is a zero mana 8-8 eight, eight ruffle. Like, that defines the wild format. I've been playing wild long enough to know to not underestimate oh. these cards. Uh, uh, yeah, go, go. I just realized that it does have the demon tag, so philosophy mm -hmm. is a thing. Yes. Um, yes, that's, that's a big deal. Having 13 minions die, um, that's going to come down pretty late by comparison to, like, uh, Flesh Giants or even... Uh, molten giant so i don't know that that's necessarily directly comparable yeah i mean the the thing is like by turn five right like turn five is kind of the sweet point where we want to be getting this down to about zero so you do get 15 mana to play with by turn five um and there are some very very good cards for this in wild that aren't standard exclusive which is a big deal because it means that it's not going to be balanced around those cards an example is like command the iladari summon six one ones with rush right for five mana that's a card that's in wild, and all of a sudden you're getting a six mana discount on this thing for five. Like, I can definitely see this type of card being able to come down consistently for zero mana on turn five, um, based on some of the other cards that we've seen. 
and you know some things like coordinated strike and stuff like that so i really like it because of this because it won't be bounced around a card like command of the illadari and it makes me very very hopeful that we might be able to get um a relevant wild demon on the deck which i'd be very excited about yeah i had some other cards to keep in mind stuff like haunted creeper right i think we've like forgotten about haunted creeper but that's two mana for three bodies um I mean, Raffle might not have forgot about Haunter Creeper. I have forgot about Haunter Creeper until I went through my collection looking for, for cards. Um, I, I am intrigued by this, but I am awfully hesitant. I know I hate to do this during card reviews where I'm just like, yeah, but like certain current decks means that this deck can't really be a thing. Like, Ship's Cannon is a card that is very annoying, right, for stuff like Odd Paladin. It's very annoying for decks like this um, that I'm a little bit worried about. But I will say... If the deck is good, I think it will see play because token strategies like this are really good against stuff like Odd Hunter, right? That's why like Odd Paladin is seeing play. So I'm hopeful that this deck sees a lot of play, but I think we do need a little bit more support pieces, right? Right now the payoffs are Earl's Old Giant, and I think I don't even know if you want to count the three mana three one um, when a minion dies, deal three. I think that's a, a payoff, but it's like a little bit of a, a little bit of a sketchy payoff. It requires it to stick a board uh, or be late enough that you can play. The command of the Eldari plus this. It, it also, in, in my experience, requires the opponent to have a board. But then the problem with it, because it uh, it can hit minions, you can run out of opponent board to then trade into. So you just kind of you're kind of hoping everything goes face just so that you have uh, attacks to continue giving. So it's it, it can be a little bit tricky uh, to pull off at times. Um, I'm hopeful that it, it becomes a thing as well. But like uh, it, you know, in my experience, it's not necessarily likely. Yeah. Now, the important thing, though, is that 13 is odd, and Command of the Ildari is odd, and so, you know, that's always a big step in Demon Hunter, um, in Wild, so, you know, odd token Demon Hunter, let's do it, philosophy, one mana, I love it. Isn't there Actually, also uh, all of good. all of the uh, Ildari summoners are, the 3, the 5, and the 7 are all odd, so, like, yeah, you, I, I believe I've done an odd version of uh, token Demon Hunter, um, even throwing nethrandamus up there at the top end because i love oh, no. that card <laughs> <laughs> nethrandamus summon uh two urzal giants alongside it yeah yeah um <laughs> what is what is the seven mana version like seven seven one ones if they all die seven summon seven more right yeah like, there's, oh, there's also a fell there's also a fell guardians which is like seven mana summon three one twos and it costs one less every time a minion dies so there's, there's some stuff intriguing intriguing uh so token demon hunter uh, I mean, we're talking about Urzal Giant because it's like the big payoff, but we got two other cards to kind of complement that uh, strategy and standard. Uh, so we have Field of Strife. Uh, so Field of Strife is the first card that we're going to talk about in a cycle of cards that are sort of like, if you're similar, <laughs> if you're familiar with magic, they they are kind of like enchantments, right? You play this spell and they, the effect lasts for a certain amount of time, right? And you can't really interact with it after the card has been played. Um, and so Field of Strife is a two-mana spell. Uh, your minions have plus one attack that lasts for three turns, and I believe that includes the turn that this was played. So you play Field of Strife, and it lasts for two additional turns after, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have Flag Runner, which is a three-mana one-six. Whenever a friendly minion dies, gain plus one attack. Uh, so Field of Strife and Flag Runner, um, I think we're a little bit less excited about these than Urzal Giant, but... How are we feeling about these cards uh, in Wild? Yeah, I think if there is a payoff, it's, you know, in, in Wild in particular, it's not going to be a slow value gener engine like Flag Runner or even, um, you know, fairly impactful, but maybe not like game winning effect like Field of Strife. That's not going to be the, the card that makes the deck relevant. It's going to be the giant. Yeah, I, I like the little Dark Shire Councilman thought that I have mm. when looking at the Flag Runner um but yeah it, it won't be that important like either way for wild i think yep all right let's talk about the uh the big demons uh so we have the first legendary that we're going to talk about tonight we have caria felsel so this is a six mana six six legendary minion with the battle cry transform it into a six six copy of a demon in your deck um so i want to go ahead and note before we start talking about a lot of the big demon demon hunter support um so unlike a lot of other big decks that exist in the WoW format, uh, you're kind of allowed to run smaller minions, right? So you get to run stuff like Armor Vendors, Glocka Crawlers, Fell Screamers, stuff like that, um, that are not necessarily the big minions that you're cheating out into play, uh, which is very different than a lot of big strategies that we have seen uh, so far in the WoW format. So that is something to keep in mind when evaluating these cards. 
Uh, but we have Carrier Felsel. Uh, so the big demons, we have like the, the Pit Commander, the 7-9 the with Taunt that recruits a minion. Um, you have the 8-8 eight, eight Taunt Nerubian Unraveler for one, uh, just for your opponent. You have uh, Green Rag, the Inquisitor. Um, you would have like Moar Forge Fiend if you want to run that. So you have a lot of big demons that you can hit. Um, and then Carrier alongside the 6-3s and the Fell Screamers. Uh, you're looking like you finally have some support in actually being able to cheat them out. Um, so, big demon hunter, how how are we feeling? Um, I mean, it's not. It's going to be a fringe deck for mm -hmm. sure. But I think that this is like a very good card in that. Like, just hitting pit commander off of this is pretty backbreaking, especially if you go pit commander into pit commander off of the uh, uh, carrier. I mean, it's. It's like a it, it it's like a big priest turn, which you know is okay. Like maybe not necessarily uh, good in the current meta game, but like uh, you know if good against board based decks. And um, like you said, you can you know build your deck in a way that is just huge minions, so you can kind of uh, fight for board early game. But I think it's a it's a very cool card. I'm looking forward to trying it out. I don't know how strong it'll be, but um, it's interesting for sure. So, yeah, Carrier is basically just Shadow Essence, which, you know, I'm actually, funnily enough, less excited about, even though it, it is very, very strong. It's just, like, a lot of the payoffs already exist in Standard, and so I doubt they're going to push this archetype to the point of viable uh, wild playability. But, I don't know, like, Pit Command has been waiting to be broken for a while. Like, that card is really busted, and it's just been hanging out, waiting for something to happen that lets it get cheated out turn 5, 6, 7. And uh, it kind of looks like it's going to get there um, with you know, some of the support that's been coming out. So, yeah, very, very strong card. All right, in addition to the carry of Felso, like we mentioned, we get to run other minions, uh, one of those being Warden of Chains. So this is a 5-mana 2-6 taunt, 4-mana uh, 2-6 taunt, I can read. Uh, with the battle cry, if you are holding a demon that cost 5 or more, you get to gain plus 1, plus 2 in stats. So it becomes a 4-mana 3-8 with taunt. Um, so just a taunt with a big butt. That helps bridge you to the the six three or the the fell screamered minion or maybe even the carry of fell soul. Um, so I mean a little bit less exciting than the carry of fell soul, but I think if you're playing this in the big demon hunter deck, right, because of the synergy. Um, I mean I don't know if you guys agree with me, but <laughs> I mean I, I thought we'd moved on from playing four mana three nine taunts or three eight taunts. I, I thought we had to get four mana five ten taunts these days. Well, even that's not good enough because, like, you need a three four or four mana three four stealth to uh, win the game. The turn you play alignment instead. Um, I don't know. It, it it's a decent support piece, I'd say. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see how it plays. Like three is a kind of important breakpoint for, um, pirate warrior in particular. So getting that extra uh, attack as well as the big caboose on it is nice but um yeah i don't i don't know if uh like taunt is that relevant in the metagame right now is my concern yeah it, it's funny i kind of see this card and I, I know that they're trying to push like big demon hunter and i kind of look at it and i'm like oh what if we just put it in, like soul demon hunter with like bladed lady and inquisitor and that was kind of just it <laughs> like we just kind of stole that little uh support piece but again that's much more of a standard idea i think um not super excited, but yeah, it's okay. Like, 8 health, taunt, it's pretty good. Alright, and let's move on to the uh, the last card here for Demon Hunter. Let's talk about Dread Prison Glaive. So this is a 1 mana 1-3 one, weapon with Honorable Kill. So Honorable Kill is the new keyword of the expansion. So kind of in between Frenzy and Overkill, right? So this is that sweet spot when you deal exact lethal uh, damage to a minion. And so with Dread Prison Glaive, if you deal damage... Um, that is equal to the health of the minion, you deal damage equal to that hero's attack to the enemy hero. So basically, uh, you know that mantra that Quirv has been chanting, where minions go face, face goes minions? Uh, well, now face goes <laughs> minions and face, right? Um, I mean, do we run this in Odd Demon Hunter, I guess is the question, and I, I am very intrigued by it. I think it's pretty damn good in Odd Demon Hunter, right? More damage, more better? Yeah, you're getting um, Twin Strike as well as uh, Fury in there, so you can... You know, manipulate your weapon damage in addition to hero powering alongside it. Um, I mean, it's certainly worth a, a try because you've got three swings with this thing. So, I mean, even if you're just getting a few chip damage to face, you're not—you don't feel like you're wasting damage into minions quite as much when you're 
taking your face into minions um so yeah it, i think it's i think it's worth a try at least it depends on yeah. how hard it is to manipulate the the attack to get to those breakpoints for the honorable kill yeah three health is always like a huge breakpoint in wild it feels like that's becoming less important though over time i would say i think like a year ago three health felt very critical um, whereas now with this, how small a lot of the pirates are and how wide they go. And then, you know, a lot of the shadow priest stuff, it's really kind of this like ship's cannon and I don't know, like South Sea captain and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, secret mage meta. And then this can become like the OP card. <laughs> Did I rig fair game? Um, but yeah, uh, we try it for sure. I like, I like my minions going, uh, I like my face going minions, but I also like going face. So this is good. Yeah, definitely worth a try, uh, in your odd demon hunter builds. All right. Let's move on to Druid. Uh, so let's talk about Capture Cold Tooth Mine. Uh, this is a two mana choose one spell. Draw either your lowest card or draw your highest cost card. Um, so everybody freaking out about the ability to potentially tutor your Celestial Alignment. Uh, as far as I know, there is currently no way to you know, build a combo Druid deck with Celestial Alignment as your highest cost card. Um, but there's potential right there's always potential when you have tutors like this uh some people are talking about just building like a uh, a celestial alignment deck similar to what we see in standard where there's no really strict combo but it's like build a giant board and then drop a lotheb alongside your lady anaconda um there's also the potential for tutoring stuff like uh auctioneer in specific decks like that uh but yeah what do you guys feel about the potential of uh capture cold tooth mine um it's one of those cards that like narrow draw like this or very specific targeted draw like this is just kind of uh waiting to be broken at some point i don't know that it needs to find specifically celestial alignment to be a good card though i think it's just kind of seems like it could be a good card um like i i don't know there there are times where you know on your combo turns you might need the uh the specific minion that wins you the game or I guess you're drawing your deck at that point anyway, but like I think it has just potential on it in its own right. And if there ever is some form of win condition that you could work towards that um, doesn't require something more than seven mana, or um, then there's potential that it does just become a fetch for celestial alignment, which is kind of scary. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm very into the idea of the more standard approach for celestial alignment decks, uh, not needing to go the Malagos route. Um, it's kind of funny that we got, like, Moonlit Guardian, moonlit Guidance, like, only a couple weeks ago, and all of a sudden we're being shown this two-mana uh, draw spell for Druid. Uh, it's kind of weird, but, yeah, I mean, getting a Lightning Bloom or Innovate as well can be very uh, powerful in certain situations, so, uh, yeah, I really like this. All right, let's move on to uh, Frostwolf Kennels. We're going to spend two seconds on this, because this is a three-mana spell that says at the end of your turn, summon a 2-2 Wolf with Stealth, and this last three turns so this is a three mana six six but it's split among three turns uh and you don't get to do anything with immediate with it immediately so i don't think it's wild playable uh and so unless one of you two interjects me i'm going to move on to the next card we've got frost saber matriarch uh seven mana four five beast with taunt that costs one less for each beast you have summoned this game so this is thing from from below for beast in druid um i don't know thing from below was a broken card right um this is one mana more. It's a little bit harder, I think, to summon beast. I actually haven't taken a look at beast and druid in a while outside of like adorable mm. infestation, but we have bees in wild. Oh, bees is true. pretty good with this. Yeah, you are right. Mm. All right, so how are we feeling about frost saber from below? I guess still probably not a great card. I mean, thing from below isn't a great card, so how is like marginally worse uh, thing from below going to be relevant cool. in a deck or in a class that can like? Druid does not struggle creating large taunts or, like, struggle with mana as a limiting factor necessarily. And I don't, like, and I mean, the, the combo with bees is cute, but, like, is a 4-5 taunt on turn 3 or 4 coming down for 0 mana really a thing? Like, Arcane Tyrant isn't run. The, the Druid-specific Arcane Tyrant uh, with taunt isn't run, and that's not much different than this, so... I mean, I'm very excited, I think, about this card in, in like, Agro Druid. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, we can take a base direction, uh, I, I think, could be really fun in, like, an Agro Druid deck. Um, it can do some pretty crazy stuff with an Oracle of a Loon. 
That's like a really cool synergy if you compare it and get a couple of those down. I mean, you know, zero mana, four, five taunt. Like, it's zero mana. I love cards with a zero mana in my aggro decks. And, you know, I, I think we're probably not quite there, but we've only seen about half the druid cards. Like, there is like a decent um, sort of beast synergy going on right now with druid where we have like vibrant squirrel where the mm-hmm. the the acorns do summon more beasts so that can help a little bit but you know even things like penguin markia charge diamond enchanted raven like there's kind of a foundation there that i really like and even like something like uh park panther is a is a card that we haven't really considered in aggro druid previously but if you start piling up enough of this like payoff alongside it i think it gets really quite good um, and it doesn't do another card that we might get to in a, in a second. So, yeah, I really like it in, like, an aggro druid deck. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about, like, Embiggen, Adorable Infestation, play Pirates, play adorable. a bunch of one-cost beasts, yeah. do some dumb yeah, things. Yeah, Adorable's huge. Yeah, Adorable is, like, two beasts, right, plus the buff for one mana. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess two, because you have to play the beast. But, yeah, I mean, you said Thing from Blow is not that strong. I think Thing from Blow is still very strong. It's just in a deck that is not very good right now, right? Thing from Blow, I think, is still one of if not the best cards in even shaman uh it just turns mm-hmm. out even shaman hasn't gotten any good cards for like a year and a half so has kind of fallen off but i think thing from is very powerful so i i mean i'm i'm gonna side a little bit with corp here i'm pretty excited about frost saber uh matriarch and corp kind of alluded to this let's talk about their next card um dire sorry dire frost wolf this is a four mana four four beast uh with stealth death rattle summon a two two wolf with stealth so basically a beast piloted shredder um, so obviously synergy with Frost Saber Matriarch. Uh, <laughs> do we do we want to run this in that aggro beast druid? Probably not, but um, I don't know. Like it, it's guaranteed six damage a lot of the time. Um, it's pretty slow though for wild right now. I think like four mana for no immediate impact is sort of pretty sketchy. Um, so yeah, it probably not the move. No, I I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't like um. <laughs> Yeah, just the part of the benefit to, to Shredder was the opponents could attack into it and then you're left with initiative on the backswing. And that's just not going to happen here because it has stealth. So the, the stealth on the front half almost acts as a detriment. Like you get to dictate the trades, but then you also like, I don't know, you're left with the weak half on the uh, on, on the backside. So I, I'm not necessarily sold on this card. But It's funny, if it, if it was the Hunter card, I think I'd really consider it an even Hunter, uh, funnily enough. Mm-hmm. But no, I don't. I don't think it really fits aggro druid very well. Yeah, the, I no, think the way think... that you want to build aggro druid doesn't really suit this, right? You want it to be low, lower to the ground, right, to support a lot of the good druid spells. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the hero card, the first hero card that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so wild heart guff, uh, actually one of the more controversial cards I think I've seen at least on Twitter. Uh, people debating about whether it's good or not. Um, so let's talk about that. We have a five mana hero card. Battle cry, set your maximum mana to 20. Gain a mana crystal, draw draw a card, and like all hero cards, you will gain 5 armor. So just on its face, it's a 5 mana 5-5, five five, or sorry, it is a 5 mana gain 5, draw a card, gain a mana crystal. But then you get the hero power, uh, which is now 2 mana, choose 1, draw a card, or gain a mana crystal. So basically life tap or wild growth. <laughs> on top of your uh you know your five mana hero card so i i'll just open up the floor here uh i i will start with in very rare circumstances is the maximum mana being set to 20 relevant as far as i know um so really this front half is you're paying five mana to to gain a mana crystal draw a card and gain five life i don't know if that's a rate that i'm happy playing i i think <laughs> Um, but that hero power is pretty damn bonkers. I just don't know what kind of decks outside of stuff like Reno Druid really want to take advantage of that hero power. Maybe I am being a little bit too close-minded here. What do you guys yeah. think? Um, first of all, I'm going to take a moment here to gloat because, uh, if you go back to our United and Stormwind, uh, card review, as soon as we saw the quest lines, I had the epiphany, oh, we're going to get hero card versions of the mercenaries, uh, yes. in, in the final set. And sure enough, uh, we did um and um this is the one that i think everybody uh, yeah so i'm gonna give myself a round of applause a big pat on the back to me uh because my brain is gigantic and i deserve this um but i think 
a lot of people, too many people, in fact, are focusing on uh, that first sentence of the, the battle cry, which is uh, your maximum mana is set to 20. Because I think people are misreading it as like a natural communion of you go to 20 mana, which is not, not at all what that uh, what that does. You, you gain exactly one mana crystal. Um, but that's kind of relevant. If you play this on, like, um, Martian, friend of the show and uh, recent uh, villain, um, said had a thread going on Twitter where he talked about how he, uh, like a lot of us did, sort of miscalculated the impact of, of quest lines because, you know, it was things like uh, uh, the warrior quest and the seed lock, like those decks don't want to pass on turn one. They don't. It's not worth it. They, we didn't. We misjudged the incidental um like rewards along the way to the uh, main quest line and so i think people are kind of falling into a similar trap here and that's a point that he made of um people are fixating a little bit too much on the mana is set to 20 and missing that it's just kind of like it's a, it's a pretty good turn five if you curve this on five mm -hmm. you draw a card and you skip six mana going straight to seven which is kind of what you want to do in alignment druid anyway so you're more free to go Oaken Summons on four, Guff on five, basically a mini shield block, um, plus a, you know, plus it bridges your mana to exactly where you need it to be, and um, just kind of a strong card. Like it, it, it helps you stabilize a little bit going into the uh, the combo turn, even if you're not necessarily using the hero power all that much. Um, you know, after you transition into the alignment phase, I I think it's just okay. It's a it's a good card, but five mana hero. Yeah, Rafa, when you when you took a moment there at the top, I thought you were just gonna make the first uh, chat mana joke uh, <laughs> of the show, which someone someone had to do, right? Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, I think this is really solid. It's just a like two mana wild growth on a shield block in. Druid decks that currently don't have a great turn five a lot of the time as a follow up token summons and it bridges the gap and it just it just feels very strong and and even in matchups um, like if you don't have the alignment like that's still huge right like like that hero power and immediately being able to ramp up to ten um, is kind of kind of nutty like uh, if you're playing against something like Reno Lock um, it just gives you so much access to so many players and you know the fact that you do keep on ramping. I think it is relevant. Like, it, it mightn't be the biggest thing right now, but uh, I, I do think it, the amount of tempo and amount of stuff that you're going to be able to do if you have, like, 12, 13 mana in certain matchups uh, is kind of a big deal. So, yeah, I really love this card. And, I, I, and like you were saying, Martian did have that great thread, and it did just reinforce the idea, hey, don't get trapped into thinking about these, you know, current archetypes. And thinking about, you know, this is the way it is, this is where it's always going to be. So I think the card is really strong. Um, oh, and of course, great call on the hero cards ruffle, considering you were the first person that I heard actually say that. Uh, I have one question. Like, would you play a five mana spell in Druid that said, gain five armor, draw a card? If it also gains me a mana crystal? crystal? Absolutely, yeah. I'd play that card. That does so, so many things. Yeah. We don't like, we don't play overgrowth right now. Uh, a lot of the celestial decks, but like uh, some do, but armor as well. Like the armor and the draw for like, one mana difference. How is ferocious hell better than this? Well, ferocious hell is three mana and it gains a lot more than five while drawing you the card. It doesn't gain. It doesn't necessarily gain a, a lot crystals. more. It doesn't necessarily gain a lot more than five. It doesn't gain a mana crystal and it doesn't give you life tap as a hero power either. Yeah. Well, I. I, I recognize that the hero power is, is busted, right? I just, yeah, I I, I, might, I might be falling into the trap of like thinking about current celestial alignment druids, which is very fair. Like the front I, half of this to me is not exciting. Um, I think even in the, I, I'm going to disagree with you there. I think even in the context of current celestial druid, this is, I think this is just good. Um, yeah, I agree. I think I think you play it there as well. All right, fair enough. Um, I will wait to be convinced on this one. Um. I <laughs> I don't know. For me, it felt like Celestial Druids were already super tight in in their list, um, and I wasn't convinced that the front half of this card was worth running because I mean I, I recognize that the hero power is really really good, but ideally you don't want to be hero powering too often. 
Um, so you, I don't know. The, the front half of it wasn't super exciting to me, but I do recognize this, this is one that I am completely on the fence on, and I will concede that I, I might just be wrong about it, and, <laughs> and probably am. Um, but I don't want to spend too much more time on it because we do have a lot more cards to go through. So let's uh, let's move on over to Hunter. Um, yeah, so Hunter, again, just like Druid, getting a couple, couple of archetypes push here. We've got specifically Secret Hunter and Big Beast Hunter. Um, so let's start with the uh, the Secret Hunter uh, synergy cards. Let's start with uh, Ram Tamer. This is a 3 mana 4-3. Uh, Battle Cry, if you control a secret, gain plus 1, plus 1, and stealth. So if you control a secret, you get a 3 mana 5-4 with stealth. Um, I don't know. Secret Hunter feels like it's in a very weird spot. Where like a lot of the time you want to play a secret on two and then like not have it procced if you don't have the mad scientist right and then so you can get these really really powerful effects on turn three. Um, the issue is like if you're playing a secret and passing against a lot of the aggro decks in the format it feels really bad, uh, and this is not a payoff that helps you recover from that. Um, so I'm not super convinced by Ram Tamer even if it is a three mana five four uh, with stealth, so you like get to guaranteed hit face with it. Um, do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I think that, like, Petting Zoo um, seemed like it would be a good card, and I feel like it is a higher quality card than this and didn't really make uh, Secret Hunter all that relevant. So if that's not going to do it, I don't think Ram Tamer is going to be the card that does it either. Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting excited by Shady Dealer in, in Hunter. Ah, that's true, a true. good comparison. Well, Shady Dealer doesn't have stealth, but... Right? I don't, I don't even know yeah. what Shady Dealer is. No, it, I, I, I mean, it's been so long, right. me out, I can't even remember what it is. I think it's just a 3 mana 5 4. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. I, I think the moral of this is. It's, for a long time. Yeah. I think the moral of this is that it's not good enough, right? Um, Stats just aren't enough. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Dun Baldar Bunker. Um, so I do not know the lore behind this, but it's a really fun name to say. Um, we got a 2 mana spell here for Hunter. Uh, at the end of your turn, draw a secret and set its cost to one. Um, unfortunately, this is an end of turn effect, so you like cannot draw and play that secret. Um, but you did a, you know, you get a way to tutor secrets out of your deck and discount them. Um, so Dunbaldar Bunker, how are we feeling about this? Maybe in like an even hunter deck specifically. Uh, it, well, if you want the lore, I can help you out with that as a uh, former WoW gamer myself. So just briefly, uh, for those of you that weren't aware, Alteric Valley was a massive, I think it was like 50 v 50, um, like PVP zone where you had different capture points that you would try to take over to help, um, you know, gain resources for your team. Um, and Dunbalder Bunker was um, one of those. And the way it worked out is again it was objective based. So you would hope that your teammate would your teammates would like capture the points moving progression of uh, your faction towards the the final boss which are the two legendaries that we did have uh the the choice between in reality um half of your team sat afk in the cave uh at the start of the zone <laughs> uh randomly jumping in order to avoid getting timed out uh another maybe third is um farming rams and in and, and um skinning them alive um Another maybe quarter is um, randomly chasing uh, single opponents that aren't following the objectives and are just trying to, you know, catch up with their teammates after having died to get to the objective. And then, you know, a very small portion of your team is actually, you know, progressing the objective. And it takes about two and a half hours of your day just to complete a single uh, round of Alteric Valley because it inevitably ends in a stalemate where like people can't um clear the the npcs because they're too strong because there aren't enough people there or there aren't enough like uh resources being farmed so it, it it's the it was the best way to get honor and it was a miserable miserable experience um if they really want to model um like hearthstone ultra valley off of the game mode we'll just like odd warrior uh bots our farming experience will just become rampant to mimic the uh, the AFK experience, and uh, games will last about uh, forty five minutes to an hour and a half, and uh, you'll have to charge your battery, your phone battery, midway through every game of Hearthstone from here on out. Well, I mean, they did say that aiming for a slower meta ruffle, so I mean, maybe, maybe that's the idea. Um... Anyway, I think this card is really cool. I don't know if it's good, but I like the idea of it. Um, it's just like. Turn turn two pass 
feels kind of bad in the uh, the current meta game, but you do get a lot out of this, especially since you're drawing a secret and um, you only pay one mana for it. So that seems like it could be a thing. Like if it, this, I'm more, I'm much higher on than the Rand Hammer for any type of secret hunter, whether it's even or just secret hunter in general. Even uh, Reno secret hunter could uh, see some resurgence with this. Yeah, I really like this card. I love it. Uh, two mana draw, three. Yes, I love card draw. Um, and I love that it gives you that steady flow of secrets, right? Which you need in secret decks generally um, because of your, your payoffs. Um, it's good that you have a guaranteed constant flow and you're not kind of left stranded um, with some awkward hands because that's something that Hunter, Secret Hunter specifically has struggled with a little bit compared to Secret Mage is lacking the ability to tutor out your secrets. You know, it doesn't have the Arcanologist. Um, it's just kind of a lot of the time relying on drawing them or just having the mad scientist. So this is really good for that. Um, yeah, very excited about this card. Don't know if it fits like even Hunter, but I, I think the upside on this is like worth keeping an eye on. Yeah, I only bring it up in even Hunter because it's like you play this on turn two and then like turn three is usually like one of the weak points and you can play like secret plus two drop um, or like on four you can do two drop plus like hero power secret. Um but yeah, I mean, the Reno Secret Hunter is actually a good shout, right? Because this is great in that deck. Uh, card draw and Hunter, top notch. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the uh, the other Hunter archetype here. We've got we got Big Hunter, make it a resurgence. <laughs> um, so the first one, let's talk about the Legendary. Let's talk about Wing Commander Ikmon. Uh, so this is Regis writing, writing a Griffin, right? For any of you guys that can see the art. Uh, he's a 9-mana 5-4 minion. Yikes. Uh, with the Battle Cry, summon a beast from your deck. Give it rush. If it kills a minion this turn, repeat. Um, I mean, nine mana, five four, in hunter with no real way to cheat it out. Um, yeah, that's all I got for it. <laughs> well, it's kind of like in um, big demon under and big hunter, you can run other cards that aren't mm -hmm. necessarily beasts or demons or big minions themselves. So if if you slam a Vandar, this is only a six mana five four, um, and that can get a lot of stats out. I don't think that's necessarily good, but like, it's a way to cheat it out, and um, it's a cool card. I'm gonna try it. What about Reno Big Beast Hunter? No, I think you. I don't think you want to. Uh, I don't think you have that many unique beasts that you can put in that deck that would be worth uh, pulling stuff off of. Off of those. Uh, I I think we found me out new Reno Pirate Warrior. No, 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 I'm not a believer. No, no, I was a believer in Pirate Warrior. I am not a believer in anything Hunter. <laughs> so e either way, like whether you're Reno or not, you can also run a Secret Passage in that type of deck and uh, fit in Dunbeldor Bunker so that you more consistently draw into your Vandar and your uh, Eichmann. Yeah. I mean, Corp <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's high fine. cost Katharina in a format that demands lower cost cards like no um i miss cube hunter a little bit though i'll be honest yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna force it and the next yes. card is the is the reason why i'm going to force it because i think this card is bonkers yeah let's, uh, talk, let's talk about it let's talk about revive pet this is three mana nature spell discover a friendly beast that died this game summon it so it is a witching hour for uh for hunter all right ruffle go better, be excited better witching hour because you discover it you choose yeah. riff riff ruffle go Oh, uh, you just pick King Crush every time. I don't know. What's, what's there to think about? You just pick the biggest thing that you have and you send it to the opponent's face. You've also got Charged Devil Sword, so like, I don't I don't know. Just just pick the big thing and point it at the opponent's face, hear it yell really loud, and uh, get a big smile on your face. I don't know. Uh, again, it's not going to be good. Neither is uh, Eichmann, I don't think, but like, I'm going to play them both a lot um, because they're fun. All right, reasonable. Just reasonable comment here. It also can help you resurrect three twelve taunts uh, against those aggro decks. Yeah. You know, just just if you don't, don't want to just hit King Crush. Uh, I mean, yeah. people forget that. Yeah, like the Guardian Animals, not necessarily the card, but the. I mean, first of all, that card could get unnerfed to seven mana, which probably still unplayable in Hunter because it doesn't have ramp. But like the minions that are typically pulled from Guardian Animals are still available to Hunter for the most part. So like, um, which would Grizzly isn't. That bad of a goal. I think you kind of run that in like a Katrina Hunter anyway, just because you mm. are so desperate for defense, and then this just brings it back uh, fully statted. 
All right, and the uh, the last card here we have for Hunter, um, not a super flashy card, but I do want to talk about. It. We have Bloodseeker. This is a two mana two two weapon, honorable kill, gain plus one plus one. Um, so plus one power, plus one durability. The only reason I think that it's worth talking about, um, there are some Even Hunter lists out there. Uh, again, Even Hunter is a pretty damn good deck right now. Uh, that are running Glaive Zuka, um, and I wonder if this card is maybe slightly better than Glaive Zuka in those decks and. If so, I, I mean, Bloodseeker is a card to look at if you are one that's running Glaive Zuka. Um, but other than that, I don't know. It's not too exciting of a card, so we can go ahead and move on uh, to our next class here, which I believe is Mage, uh, if I'm remembering my alphabet correctly. Um, so we got Mage. <laughs> um, the first card that we want to talk about, let's leave the controversial one for last year. Let's talk about Build a Snowman. Um, so this is Pyros for dummies. This is a... Uh, no. It is. It'll never match my pyros. I have a golden pyros. It is so much more beautiful than this. I'm not gonna sing the frozen theme song. Um, you yeah. gotta sing your alphabet first, me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am, wait, was Mage correct? Mage was correct, right? Yes, yeah, dude, you're yeah. doing fine. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, dude, you said that. You're freaking me out here. <laughs> um, I mean, build a snowman is basically pyros, right? So this is a three mana frost spell. Summons a three three that freezes. Uh, adds build a snow brute, which is six six, and then I believe the last one summons a nine nine. Uh, build a snogger, um, which is probably why a lot of people are going to play it because ogre. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this is pyrus, right? This is a three mana pyrus. I think it's relevant for standard because it is now they now have access to one of those non targeted freeze effects for for quest mage, uh, which is one of the limiting factors for that deck. Um, but in wild, I mean I, I'm not excited about this card at all, right? Pyrus is garbage and, and i don't know how you guys feel about this one snogger mm, told that's you. all i have to say yeah told you <laughs> um all right let's talk about siphon mana so this is a two mana arcane spell that deals two damage if you manage to honorably kill with siphon mana you reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one all right so corb you're the apm player mana cheat in my wild format? Oh my goodness, what is this? My APM mage? Um, I'm excited. I want to cheat some mana. I like Apprentice. Like, that's a good card. I like uh, Removal. Two mana. Uh, like, two mana deal, too. That's pretty um, respectable, you know? Like, people have played Rune Orb, and this is a hell of a lot better than Rune Orb um, in that kind of hindsight. So, yeah, uh, I really like this card. This is good. Um, are you going to play this thing, the Night Mage? Hell no. Uh, it doesn't fit. Um, but like Mizaki, uh, Mizaki really likes it if they ever go back to that. And yeah, just the Flame Waker stuff. So yeah, uh, good card. And you know, APM has had a little bit of resurgence actually with the, uh, Drekthar that just came out. So a lot of hype around it and it, it's still an okay, it's not great, but I mean, this could definitely push it a little bit further over the edge, which I'm sure everyone would love to see. Right, man? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> now hear me out with this one, uh, because two is a very critical breakpoint in that Sorcerer's Apprentice has two health. So you can kill your own Sorcerer's Apprentice but retain the effect after doing so because of the honorable kill. So, net Think neutral. Battle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, my instinct when I saw this is like, I'm not running Rune Dorb in my APM mage list right now. Um, so this is not really just like a swap, like a direct swap right like replace rune dorbs with this my concern obviously was like how consistently are you getting the honorable kill trigger um like outside of like let's talk about just meta decks right now in the format you're not really getting this off of an odd hunter right because the minions that they do summon are one ones um like even lock the only thing you really have is like maybe a cult neophyte um or like you can do like a mule alongside a ping um so like yeah you have targets in odd hunter but like you don't have anything in the mirror either so if you're not consistently triggering honorable kill on siphon mana doesn't this card just like absolutely suck well i mean you have to consider if especially if you're talking about the flame waker version you have a lot of incidental damage that you do from the wakers themselves so you can set up honorable kills with this even if the minion didn't start there and uh for the early game pirates too is very very common like mm -hmm. that's because especially with like the uh, uh the blood sail deck in now as a 2-2 that's like one of their frequent openers so um 
it, yes, we're going to need to see how like the shape of minions mm -hmm. in the metagame, but I think in particular where this fits is in the Flame Waker version because of that um, splash damage that you get from the Waker that you can then use to set this up. The bummer of that is that you're in like, you probably in terms of mana allocation want to play this early in the turn, but you might have to like wait, but like you're going to have zero mana spells anyway that don't need the cost reduction because you've got an apprentice on board. So I think there's definitely some potential here to like in that particular deck. I'm not as sold in a Mizaki mage necessarily because I think Rune Dorb is maybe still better there just because uh, generating additional spells to um, to like ramp the spell damage might be better than just like reducing the cost of spells that already cost zero mana in hand. So I, I'm more high on this in a waker version. Yeah. All right. So this is a card that I think is going to see a lot of play initially when it comes out. Cause regardless of how good it is, people enjoy playing the APMH style decks. Like we, we, we are seeing that with direct there. There is a surge, uh, I think is an understatement in popularity of APMH, at least in legend ranks on NA. Um, and so I'm sure we're going to see some experimentation and find out really, really quickly whether this was, uh, you know, living up to the hype or was just actually a little bit of bait. All right, let's move on into Paladin. Um, so the first card I want to talk about is uh, Light Forged Cariel. This is the uh, the hero card for Paladin. Uh, she is a seven mana hero card with the battle cry, deal two damage to all enemies. So this is uh, Consecration, right? It hits the board and the hero. Equip a two five immovable object of course you also get the five armor the immovable object is a seven mana weapon this doesn't lose durability your hero takes half damage rounded up um this can still obviously be removed with stuff like zeph into ooze or rust rot viper uh cards like that but swinging does not uh lose the durability uh so you basically take half damage uh which is Super relevant, right? We're just talking about these Ignite Mages and APM Mages. <laughs> um, all right, but Blessing of Qu uh, Queens is the hero power. So this is two mana. Give a random minion in your hand. Plus four, plus four. Uh, so basically, a Blessing of Kings effect, right? But Blessing of Queens. Love that. Uh, all right. Light Forged Cariel. I spent like 20 minutes thinking about this card when it initially came out, and I was like, I still can't figure out whether this is good or not. <laughs> In our in our format, um, so how are you guys feeling uh, about Carriel here? Uh, it, I'm gonna use this as a cop out a lot, but I think this is it, this is legitimately a card that's difficult to evaluate without like seeing it in play. Like it does a lot of things, which tends to mean that it's like a, a good thing, right? Like you're you have a permanent two five weapon that doesn't lose durability. So you can, it's not just you take less damage, but you can swing into things uh, with that um, two damage breakpoint we were just talking about. Um, the I guess the question is, is that enough to slow things down? Because it is a pretty steep mana cost, right? Like it, it's, it's a good card, but you have to pay seven mana for it. And the question becomes, is the payoff going to be enough? Um, obvious like first thought is a slower hand buff paladin which actually has been popping up a bit recently like um going for later game plays with like uh chargers to burst things down um and a lot of lifesteal in the in the mid game that we saw come out uh in the previous ex expansion and united and stormwind so maybe there's a home for it there um i don't know i'm i just want to try it because i i don't know how to evaluate it either but it seems very cool like we haven't had an effect like that before or quite like this that's uh that persistent in like a permanent weapon like this is this is just kind of cool i want it give me it now let me play it now <laughs> uh yeah i really like this card as well uh very very cool the rounded up thing is kind of funny where uh you know like flame waker pings are gonna have to still be getting through oh, and that's stuff like true. that yeah um and but, but it'll still give, like, a lot of healing, so I don't know, I really like it. Um, and hopefully it does give a little bit of survivability, just enough. Like, there are going to be some decks that just, it feels very awkward um, having to play against this. Like, a deck like Evenlock kind of looks at this as, like, what the actual hell, you know, with the 8-8s <laughs> that are, you know? And it's gonna, I mean, like, it's going to be healing. Too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I think 
like Ruffle said, it's hard to evaluate, but very cool card. And I'd be very, very down for um, you know, any sort of slower, more controly based deck. I think it's actually a very good card in Libram Paladin. Now that I'm thinking about it for Wild as well. Libram Paladin is a deck that has struggled mostly against those sort of uh, you know, combo over the top damage decks. And you know, being able to cut off that immediate massive amount of damage is very big for that deck because it can take a bit and heal up. It just can't take 30 at once. And if this can slow that down, then I think that's very, very good. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about it in Libra Paladin. Um, the issue is, is like, the most popular matchup that it struggles into is, like, the Odd Hunter. And so, like, your Odd Hunter hero power deals two instead of three. Um, and although, like, one yep. damage pingers still deal one. So it's not actually cutting off that much damage uh, I, in I that would... matchup. I don't know about that. Have you faced a non-odd version of uh, like Questline Hunter? It, the the difference is significant and does add up over time. Plus, you're getting the five immediate armor from mm-hmm. the uh, the carry all. So, like maybe I, I I think there's something to that. Like you're already playing a slower mid rangey strategy in that deck anyway. So you probably want this probably wants to go in a deck that supports that. So yeah. it's not going to necessarily be like the um, first day of school hand buff paladin that we saw where it fits. So nor is it going to be like a call to arms paladin. Um, it's going to be something like either a slower hand buff, maybe a Reno hand buff. I've been seeing a bit of or um, or that Libram deck. Yeah, I also shout outs like Reno paladin probably likes this as well. Uh, I mean, Reno Air. <laughs> we'll, we'll say eh, it can fit in Arena deck for all these hero cards, probably. Um, all right. So I, I, I can think of one exception. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll it. Get to I, I thought about that the yeah. moment I said that. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to try out Lightforge Carriel. I'm still like, I wouldn't be surprised if she like wasn't very good, but I also like wouldn't be surprised if she was really, really good. Um, uh, and of course, like you know me, I love Libra Paladin. I will be trying her in that, and I will be very excited to try that as well. All right, let's talk about the other Paladin Legendary. Uh, we have Sidon the Scarlet. This is a three mana two two with Rush. Whenever this minion gains attack or health, double that amount wherever this is. So whether that is in your hand, board, or deck. Um, so basically, uh, hand buff Paladin. When you give your hand plus one plus two, you're giving Sidon plus two plus two. Uh, you know, or, you know, Glowstone Technician gives us plus four, plus four. Um, so are we running this in any deck that is not Hand Buff Paladin is my first question. And the second question, is this even good enough in Hand Buff Paladin? I'm, I'm going to assume yes, right? That's a lot of stats that you're getting in that deck uh, pretty quickly. And it does have Rush on the like on the card itself. You don't have to commit a Brunstick for it. Um, so, so how are we feeling about Side on the Scarlet? I think the fact that it has Rush makes it... Uh much more relevant like to be able to have a three mana minion like value trade over a giant potentially is a is a pretty big deal and i think with like you notice the difference in the like size of your opponent's minions when they play a uh gram street enforcer versus when they play a glowstone technician right like that's that that is a significant difference and that's what this is doing uh it also gets bonus stats from things like hand of it all um conviction like yeah it's Seems like you just want it in that deck, don't you? It's very, very funny with Blessing of Authority in particular. <laughs> um, Gross, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a big lad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's pretty good. Like, I don't think it's actually amazing. Like, I think it's if it's in hand buff power, that's one of the weaker cards in the deck. And I do think it's competing for those lower slots. Um, I, 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 I do think it'll probably make it. But I, I don't think it's amazing, just because three mana, um, like realistically, if you play a couple buffers, it's like a three mana six six rush, which by itself isn't as amazing as you might think compared to something like the um, the life steal that you know gets the direct damage and they kind of have to awkwardly trade around it. Whereas like three mana six six rush does get that immediate value trade, but it's not super threatening by itself then again I, I feel like at the same time as the words coming out of my mouth i'm just picturing it after like a glowstone and it's going to be like a nine nine and yeah okay i am kind of convincing myself as i'm talking i mean what about even just dumping two libram of wisdoms on this like that's pretty yeah good it's in, in and of itself right like uh libram paladin does sometimes struggle to swing the board back in its favor if it doesn't have the libram's of hope so like that seems pretty good too yeah 
it does seem pretty good to me. Um, so Sidon, Scarlet, and Lifeforge Carrier both looking like very playable Paladin Legendaries uh, in our format, at least in their specific decks. Uh, all right, let's talk about Dunbaldar Bridge. Uh, so four mana spell enchantment thingy. After you summon a minion, give it plus two, plus two, last three turns. Um, so this reminds me very much of the... God, what is the card called? Um... The the fact that you can't remember what the card is tells you how good of a card that is and how we should <laughs> evaluate this one. Because I know exactly what card you're thinking of, and I can't think of the name either. It's the uh, plus it's... one, plus one to all your minions, wherever they are, card. Yeah. And that card sucks, and so this card. Invigorating Sermon, I think it's called. Mm, true. I wanted to... I nailed it. <laughs> you did nail it. Um, I mean, do you guys want to talk about this, or should we just move on? Because I, I kind of want to just move on. There's nothing really exciting about it. Next... Right, okay, I can I can give you some lore on this briefly. It, it was a major, major frustrating choke choke point that always came up during Alteric Valley, where you would just spend like 15 minutes battling on the bridge, making no progress, and it was miserable. So I hate this card already. So there yeah. you go. No progress, just like we have uh, with cards like this. They all just suck. Let's talk about Templar Captain. Uh, this is a big Paladin card. We have an 8-mana 8-8 eight eight with Rush. After this attack, so minion summon a 5-5 Defender with Taunt. Um... So obviously really, really nicely with stuff like Duel and Commencement. Um, I mean, it is a very, very good card in Big Paladin. But we are talking about Big Paladin. Um, a very, very... Uh, I'll just come out and say it. A very bad deck, right? But there's a very, very strong card in that deck. Much better than Loth Lothar, whatever. The last Paladin Legendary we got. Um, that had, this, like... <laughs> that fit in the same archetype, so... Um, I mean, I think Templar Captain is a very good card. Ruffle, you look like you wanted to to argue with that a little bit. Uh, people had like pretty decent success with Dual Paladin not that really? long ago. I think that it's uh, it, yeah, it's it's not good, <laughs> but like it, it into certain matchups, it, it can be like because it can it can just scam wins with either Prismatic Lens or with Dual into um, something big enough to to win games. I think people were getting like close to top ten with it. I, that doesn't really say much early in a season. Uh, which is when I think it was, but like you know, it was it was over the course of uh, a of a month. I was seeing lists pop up and doing reasonably well. I tried it myself, and yeah, there there were matchups where it felt good. It's hard for um, you know an odd paladin to deal with one large minion because not everybody's caught on to the fact that like even luck exists as a deck both um, to play and to build against. So hunter's mark isn't always there. Um, yeah, that said, this card is just kind of okay. You you always get the guy off the duel, right? Or is that not how would that work exactly? Hmm? Like if you uh, duel when you, when you, when you actually, oh yeah, well you would right. you'd theoretically get two of them, right? Yeah, exactly. After this yeah. So because you would be able to you would get two guys because he would attack, then he you would get to use his rush to attack into something else. So actually, now that you say that, yeah, you you're getting a ten ten plus whatever is left of this um, on the board after a duel. So that seems pretty good. Yeah, I really like it in that deck. It's just, I, I, don't, I don't think that's enough for Dual Paladin right now, but um, like Rebel said, like I don't underestimate the big decks because, you know, mana cheat good, and uh, <laughs> we'll have to keep on seeing. They keep on trying to help out this archetype, so we'll keep an eye out as they, I guess, release the rest of the Paladin stuff. Is Dual standard legal? No. 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 So it's just commencement, right? Yeah. yeah. Which does feel a little, a little light, longer. right? It, it feels a little light compared to what they've been giving Warrior as a you know as a comparison. So I feel like there might be something here that they yeah, there might be some more cards coming that make me rethink this big paladin bad statement that I just made that probably made a lot of people mad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think we can just leave off with the comment of Templar Captain, very very good in that specific archetype, right? Like if you are playing big paladin and you're not running two Templar Captains, you are doing something incorrect. All right. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to priest here. Uh, only two priest cards revealed so far. Um, let's start with undying disciple, six mana, three seven minion with taunt, death rattle, deal damage equal to this minion's attack to all enemy minions. Um, so if you shadow essence into this card, it is a six mana five five that will deal five to all enemy minions, uh, or as is will deal three to all enemy minions. Um, I will lead you guys two questions. Does it fit in the normal Big Priest? And two, are we maybe at that point where we reconsider the the medium priest decks that ran Convincing Infiltrators, 
Uh, maybe we run some Undying Disciples and then run something like a Confuse as like a finisher since we don't just get to outvalue somebody uh, with these, you know, big 9 and 10 drops. No. No. <laughs> I think that if you Shadow Essence into this, you've made a huge mistake in like your deck building process. Um, I also think that like the number of steps you just outlined, you're dead when by the time you get to like that. Like if you have a board full of Undying Disciples that you then can fuse to smack your opponent in the, the face, that game's long been over. So <laughs> I don't I don't see that being a, a, a possibility. There may be something there in like a Death Rattle um, deck with the, um, with the card that was released from the mini set, the tradable one. But having played that card, it is incredibly and brutally slow to the point where like if you, that is your game plan you, you're not winning games in in this format right now so if you're relying on that as your win card then you you just i don't know i don't know what q casual i guess is my suggestion having just spent hours trying to make a death rattle priest deck work with that card and uh i think i spent three and a half hours of uh legitimately a lost streak i just i lost every single game trying to make that work so it's not i don't think it's a real the thing that you can do uh i guess my only words about this card is it's kind of funny compared to blasted tunneler is that the name of the uh it's like a seven mana three seven taunt death rattle give three yeah. damage to everything <laughs> like that's pretty much it okay i, I will I will push back on that because uh, you can't power creep a bad card, first of all. And yes. second of all, uh, class cards are inherently stronger than neutral cards. That's always been the case. So, Yes, uh, agreed, but I, it's I'm a fun. I know, <laughs> but I want to shut that down for you YouTube commenters. I see you. Uh, true that. All right. I, I'm going to look at and theorycraft this, uh, this medium priest build. Um, all my hatred for convincing Infiltrator back when Big Priest was popular. Uh, come back. I uh, maybe maybe I'm a believer. This might be my Reno Pirate Warrior of the uh, of the set. All right, let's talk about oh, Shadow Works. What? <laughs> Sorry, I just said it's getting worse every expansion. It's true. Um, I'm desperate, man. I'm desperate for new decks. Um, all right, let's talk about Shadow Word Devour. This is a one mana shadow spell. Choose a minion. Uh, it steals one health from all other minions. So this is kind of like a one mana whirlwind that can steal stats and make a big, big minion. Um, I mean, it's a very weird card, <laughs> right? Uh, how are you guys feeling about this? Maybe like a, a big priest or even maybe aggro priest? Probably not, right? Not aggro priest with all the one health minions. Ignore it. Or ignore me saying that. Slower priest X probably is where you're looking at this. Uh, is it worth a slot? Add card, but I like it because it's weird. I like ran like Priest has all these weird, weird, weird cards, and I like it because Priest has like all this random generation, and I like it when the wa when the weird bad cards kind of find a specific new use off like a renew or a palm rating, um, and so I like it for that reason. But I'm never gonna intentionally put this in my house deck, uh, unless it's like an achievement or something that I'm trying to complete. I don't farm an achievement, so this is never going to find its way into my deck. I don't think unless uh, they print something else that somehow makes it worth running i don't i don't see it being uh, adding stats to your minions isn't enough right now um that's why i don't think undying disciple is good either because again adding stats to your minion doesn't do enough if they don't have an immediate impact on the board um and you've just got so much aoe removal and priest like <laughs> let's move into rogue here we have uh let's start with a hero card we got shadow crafter scabs Seven mana, obviously gain five armor. Battle cry, return all minions to their owner's hands. So vanish. Summon two four two shadows with stealth. Um it is worth noting. Uh seven mana vanish, summon two four twos, and then on turn eight, if you play a battle master, that is sixteen damage. Set up. Okay. I do not know how relevant that is. <laughs> um But let's get to that hero power. I think this is the card that everybody's excited about. Or the hero power that everybody's excited about, at least. Uh, Slide of Hand. This is a zero mana hero power. The next card you play this turn costs two less. It is not limited to spells or minions or combo cards or battle card cards or anything like that. It is literally any card that you play will cost two less. 
Um, so yeah, Pillager Rogue. I- I've heard some rumors about that. I- I'm not convinced about it in Pillager Rogue because Pillager Rogue wants to kill you before turn seven. Um, but I'm sure you can do some dumb things with this in something like Arena Rogue or maybe that Edwin Scabs Potion Illusion Rogue um, that we've been talking about for a couple weeks. Uh, maybe even replaces Valera in Mill Rogue for those of you guys that are still playing that deck. Um, I don't know. How hype are you guys about Shadowcrafter Scabs? I mean, I think it's just like a seven mana vanish with uh, with that adds eight four worth of stats on the board. I, I think that just makes it a good quality card. Uh, I think, like you alluded to, just finding a home for it is going to be the difficult point. So eventually, I think that this probably finds a home. I think a Reno like Rogue is a good look. Like Reno Tempo Rogue, you just kind of uh, pave the way for your four twos to go face uh, to close out the game with this um, on on turn eight. I think is where I see it because um, you're running Octobots in there, so maybe it comes down on six, and like you can, I don't know, you you just need that last little bit of damage because uh, having played the deck myself, there's there's some potential there. It just kind of like um, if it runs out of steam it loses the game and so this is this gives you a closing potential if you do run out of steam so i don't know it, it's a it's a cool card i think it's good um it's just i think finding a home is the difficult point yeah i really like this one um again uh home is a little bit difficult i think mill rogue is probably the most appropriate fit in wild um pillager i don't know like maybe <laughs> like like seven mana is a lot of mana but you know like having the vanish effect and sort of uh the armor and you know that doesn't seem too bad either so i don't know but definitely mill rogue like i think mill rogue is a really good fit i think that uh Valera is still very good in uh mill rogue because it's it, it's a cloak of shadows which is you know more consistently buys you a turn than uh vanish in the current metagame in particular and like doubling up or giving you multiple copies of cold light is i don't know does this change how many cold lights you can play in a turn you play nine mana worth that will go down to seven yeah i guess this gives you an additional cold light as well right because you uh you play one um one mana cold light on turn 10 and then three full cost cold lights so that's four total cold lights in a turn that's pretty good with the hero power too so maybe it is a better late game hero power for uh i mean do you ever want to run both like you could run both. Oh, like, I would. Yeah, I would probably rogue. run both. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. That that can get clunky. Like, just having a third copy of Vanish, I guess, isn't a bad thing. Um, in Mill Rogue. Yep. All right. Uh, we're talking about some fringe rogue archetypes. So let's talk about some more. We got Forsaken Lieutenant. Let's say two mana two two stealth minion. After you play a Death Battle minion, become a two two copy of it with Rush. Um, I mean eggs, jades. I mean, Death Rattle Rogue has never really taken off, has never really seen a ton of play. Um, we could also just do, what is it, Forsaken Lieutenant into Liliana, right? The Death Rattle Summon a 4-2 that attacks a random, I think it's enemy. <laughs> um, also got some monsters behind you, so. Do you want to, you, you don't run this in a monsters behind you deck, do you? Because yeah, probably not. It could summon this up. Yeah. Right, but like you also get the stand before the uh, the monsters, so ideally, I mean, yeah. But like, it's probably too high uh, a density of um, like uh, of uh, minions in that deck. There's also just like I don't know. I've I've had some decent su- fringe success with like a cube rogue, um, just like blasting out uh, Lilianas and uh, like Leroy's and and stuff in cubes uh, with Anka, and this could kind of fit into that as well. Uh, but like Lillian's uh, probably the best bet with this just because it curves nicely um, I mean speaking of monsters behind you uh, Snowfall Graveyard uh, is the next and I, don't, I don't know what to call these cards en- enchantment effect cards uh, <laughs> there, there's something it's they're, a three mana rogue spell they're like battlefields they're locations yeah. on in Alteric Valley so I think calling them like battlefields is uh, or All right. I don't know zones areas I don't the next Landmark. battlefield zone area thing I don't know is <laughs> three mana. That rolls um, off the tongue. Your your death battles trigger twice, uh, last three turns. Um, so the only thing I can really think about this outside of your normal mill, not mill rogue death battle rogue things. Um, they're just like trying to tempo out with like jades or eggs or whatever. Um, 
just play this with Cobalt Illusionist and, and summon two Malagoses instead of one, and then use that to kill your opponent so that you have to run less like dead damage cards in your deck and can maybe run a little bit more draw and or survivability. Um, I don't know. Has anybody revisited Malagos Rogue with uh, with Shroud of Concealment? I don't think I've seen a Malagos Rogue in years, I feel like. Mm, I'm sure Swag has. <laughs> um, he's he's always pretty high on uh, making Malagos work. Um, yeah. But I don't... Yeah, I, I mean, that just gives you... The, like yeah, the the damage pieces are inflexible, but they also like help remove minions. This is exclusively a combo piece, so it's kind of inflexible in its a uh, in its use. So I don't I don't know about that. I don't I doubt it'll be unless we see some better death rattles that are worth playing in the mid game. I don't know that we'll uh, see this see much play. A very slow but very cool like deck building and you know YouTube uh, type card um and just like very fun in general so yeah like malagos cube bro like all those archetypes are really cool so yeah. yeah all right so it looks like we are going to be getting some more death battle support which i think i'm very excited for just because it's an archetype that's very fun to play but has been very bad for a very long time i'm so excited to see uh what they add to the class all right so let's move into shaman um let's start with snowball fight what a what a great card um <laughs> be- beautiful flavor uh, is a three mana frost spell and shaman deal one damage to a minion and freeze it if that minion survives repeat this on another minion i uh i think it's important to note that it can hit your minions as well so it's not just a one-sided board freeze but i do still kind of equate it to a frost nova where you're probably playing this in decks where you're not running a ton of minions and you run this to stall a board or stall a turn while you set up you know while you get to turn five so that you can play Hagath the Scheme, or uh, while you set up a Perpetual Flame, or set up a Spirit of the Frog turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a Frost Nova, and I think the way that it's worded is also really important, because, you know, it works with stuff like Marabi, right? You get, get an extra copy of Marabi into your hand. <laughs> um, which is what we all want in our world. Finally, Marabi is playable. <laughs> I mean, Snowball Fight, uh, how are you guys feeling about this one? I, I um, think it's really cool card i'm this is one of the ones i'm most excited about i think like you said it's maybe uh just like a frost nova with upside yeah. well i'm much higher on it now yeah now that you mentioned the Baravi synergy i wasn't even thinking of that for some reason uh but no, this card's really cool i love this card it's, it's just fun and it feels uh like really nice and shaman um like, it, like I like going down this whole like frost path as well, especially after we lent so hard into the um, the nature uh, stuff earlier in the year. So it's very very cool. Um, just better most of the time, I think, than frost over. I, I guess it's I, I guess it's like just depends a little bit on what the format looks like and just how many one one tokeny things there are. But yeah, really cool. Yeah. All right, and it has great synergy with the uh, the legendary minion here for shaman. We have Bear Baron Glacier. Uh, check out the name of this whenever you get the chance. Uh, great, great pun. Uh, it's a 7-mana 6-6 six, six elemental. Battle cry for each frost spell you have cast this game. Summon a 3-4 elemental that freezes. Uh, giving me Dr. Boom vibes, like the uh, the bomb Dr. Boom card. Um, so I, I just want to go ahead and put this out there. Uh, a little bit of anti-synergy. Uh, a little bit sad to see, right? Dungeoneer draws nature plus elemental. This is an elemental frost spell. It's a little bit of, a bit of anti synergy there, but I, I do want to go ahead and say the pure Galakron Shaman list are already running two Invocation of Frost and Ice Fishing as the only three spells that they run. By the way, all three of those are frost spells. And so outside of a dedicated frost deck that probably will obviously be running Baron Glacier, how do we like this card to maybe just like regular Galakron Shaman as a like 7 mana 6-6 six, six that summons 3-3-4s. Three, three, oh, I am very excited, like, at the, the prospect of control Galakron free Shaman. Like, I, I think that'd be super, super sick and I love going down that path. And we're kind of not that far away. Like, just because Ice Fishing and uh, the Invocation are so premium, like, those are your best cards in the deck, basically. Um, and they just happen to be Frost Spells, and now we're getting the support. So I actually love this a lot. 
Uh, and I really hope we get some other stuff that really makes it worthwhile. Because the, the, the Shaman arc, like, Shaman decks are pretty close. And um, it feels like it's the class that is maybe the most likely to really solidify itself as a sort of control class in Wild um, consistent, consistently. So, yeah, I love this card. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty high on it too. Freeze is uh one way to slow down some of the damage from um like the the juggernaut weapons that they get and like the the shape of these minions is pretty important too because a, a 3 4 lines up nicely into most uh pirate minions. So if you can block out their early game boards with some of those uh freeze effects or just like the Galagrand rush minions and like keep them from minion your face in the early game, they're going to have a hard time in your face in the late game as well so seems good yeah all right very excited for for baron glacier all right so let's move on to i think the most complicated card for sure uh that we have seen so far uh and a very hype card so this is brucon of the elements this is the shaman hero card eight mana uh, obviously you gain the five armor battle cry call upon the power of two elements and so when you play brucon the battle cry is going to have you choose two out of the four potential hero power options here. Um, and so you have four different types. You have the lightning invocation. This is a uh, hero power that will deal two damage to all enemy minions. You have earth invocation that's going to summon two, two, three elementals with taunt. You have the fire invocation, deal six damage to an enemy hero. Uh, and then Water Invocation, Restore 6 Health to all friendly characters. So this is giving me sort of uh, Kalamos vibes uh, with the types of effects that it has. So basically what happens when you play Brucon, you choose two out of those four. You cannot choose the same one twice. Um, and then what happens is you get a hero power very similar to the, uh, the Dr. Boom hero card. Uh, and that... Uh, hero power is going to be one of the other two options so basically you have access to three out of the four the moment that you play them uh and so just like dr boom that hero power is going to rotate every turn uh and it's going to rotate to the one one of the three remaining but it's obviously in a random order similar to dr boom uh and just one last note the hero powers do cost two mana so all of this is going to be up on the screen okay uh so this was released by ben who also gave us a nice little guide here on how to <laughs> How to operate the card. So, Brucon of the Elements, pretty pretty complicated card. It's very Dr. Boom-esque, right? I think it's the the way to say that, except it's a lot more of an immediate impact than, uh, than Dr. Boom did when you played it. How are you guys feeling about this card? It's a lot. <laughs> I, I just talked a lot. How are you guys feeling about the card, though, itself? Like, your initial impressions? Yeah, it's just kind of like Dr. Boom and Calamos, like, um, had an intimate... Uh, night together and uh, spawned Brucan, um, which we're all very grateful for uh, because this card seems awesome. I don't like eight mana is a lot to ask, but like, I don't know, like Reno Shaman might want this. Like, you don't have better hero powers in uh, in Shaman decks, right? Like, you your totem kind of sucks. And if you're not running the, you know, big brain forb uh, list with Galakron, like, your hero power is going to kind of suck for the rest of the game, so why not have one card make it better? And oh, Ruffle, I really, I really hope you didn't inspire some fan fiction or anything <laughs> with that comment. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, right for the holiday season. Um, but yeah, this card sucks. I think. I think this is just bad. Like, I, I'm sad about this card. I was really, really excited for um, Shaman to get a hero card that I thought was going to be a big difference maker um, because it felt like the a lot of the hero cards are very like pushed, right? Like They're very strong intentionally. Um, and I thought it was a great opportunity for like Reno Shaman to get something great that had a really strong battle cry that worked with Shutterwalk and yada yada. And I just don't like this card. I, I think it's very low impact on the turn that you play it. Um, you do get that guaranteed five healing with the armor, but apart from that, like a consecration and some two threes, like for eight mana. Are you kidding me? That's that's just so weak. It feels like the the deal lethal damage is probably never really relevant. The healing six is just okay. Um, like it's so 
weak on tempo, I think, for eight mana. And then the hero power itself, like, the fact that it's random and, like, like I said, the deal six to face is pretty iffy by itself as well. It doesn't work great with Shadow Walk because the effects are random. Um, I don't know. I don't like this at all. And it kind of bums me out a little bit. I'm, I'm going to put this in my Shaman decks just to spite you, Corb. I respect it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm in Corb's boat where it is a little bit underwhelming, but then I also think about it like, didn't we have kind of the same reaction to Dr. Boom where it's like, wow, give your max rush? Like, that doesn't seem super impactful. I mean, I think a lot of us were kind of underestimating the power of rush. At least I did. Um, I do not think that this will be as good as Dr. Boom, but I also think like, I don't know, it's, it's a lot more fun to me than Hagatha, and there are people that are running Hagatha, and I think the, like, it's, better than Hagatha at least right um and so if you're not running the Galakron package then I think you probably want this um but yeah I don't know it, it could have been so much more right I, I do agree with that for sure I, I think like personally I, I think that they bumped it a man or two up just because the like battle cry stuff going on in Shaman you know whether it's uh like Makor uh, and, and things like that I, I suppose that makes sense but I don't know kind of just bummed me out like I, I really wanted something kind of broken for Shaman here and uh, I don't think we got it but maybe I'm wrong how, do, how does this work with Makad? do you get the fire armor as well or do you just get the no you, you wouldn't get the armor you'd get like you get some random you get two uh, random elements you get two random ones. yeah two random ones yeah mm. I'm just imagining a world where you go like Bolner Makah couple of cheap battle cries and you just like fireball your opponent out of the game from 30 health i'm excited for those highlight clips but outside of that like like i mentioned i think if you're not running the galakron you, you probably run this like it's not terrible like it's better than agatha and that's seeing play in lists that people are net decking from white delight so it's probably better than that in my opinion <laughs> um all right so let's move on to uh to warlock here uh let's start with the the hero card for Warlock, we have Dreadlich Tamsin. Six mana hero card, gain five armor. Battle Cry, deal three damage to all minions. Uh, shuffle three rifts into your deck. Draw three cards. That is a lot for six mana. Um, the rifts that are being shuffled into your deck are three mana spells uh, that summon a 3-3 three, three Dread Imp, cast when drawn. So very similar to like the spiders or the 3-3s three, or bombs or... Soul Fragments, all that kind of stuff <laughs> that we have seen before. And the Hero Power here is a 2-mana uh, Hero Power. Shuffle a Rift into your deck, draw a card. So basically, Life Tap that shuffles a 3-3 into your deck while you know still drawing you a card. So, obviously, cannot fit into Reno Warlock. But Evenlock? I, how, do, how do we like this in, in Evenlock? I like to be closing out the game on turn six and even lock, and part of that is retaining my uh, one mana hero power. Mm -hmm. um, uh, six or seven is really where I'm looking to finish. So, I'm this feels too controlly for a deck that is not a control deck to me. Um, but could be wrong. It draws you three cards. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the draws you um, three is. You can mill. Something. You can mill a couple cards. I mean, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> With your uh, full hand that you always have as even lock. Um, I don't know. I guess, like, the hand size part actually is legitimately kind of awkward in even lock. Like, the, the, you tend to keep a lot anyway. Um, this is the card I wanted in Shaman, dude. Like, that's what I want. I, I want them to switch or something. Because uh, this would have been nuts in Shaman. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's very high impact uh, on the turn that you play it. Um, would I play this in a glare deck currently? um is a thought just because um you know like it, it does provide additional layers of threats you're not closing out games that quickly like there are a lot of games that get a little bit grindy with glare um especially like reno lock or like even reno lock matchups or things like that um and the aoe the the draw like being able to draw into maybe zero cost uh flesh giants or molten giants could be kind of really good as well, as well as maintaining hand size for an Etheron and Null. So, I don't know. Like, it does so much that I don't want to underestimate it, is the thing. Yeah, that that battle cry, it's insane, right? We, we were talking about 
the battle cries for the uh, the druid hero power, right? And how that was pretty impactful. Like this is this is nuts. It's AOE and draw three, and like sometimes you're summoning like a three three or six six. Um, I I, I oh God, I wish I wish I could play this in like arena deck because that's like a great card for arena deck. Um, as it currently stands, I don't know if it really has a place. I mean, would you run this in in key block? So the three threes. Uh, they are demons, right? But I could see this as like uh just refill in a in a control keyboard lock style deck. Um, since you're not running like sense demons or backfires, I don't I, think so. No, you do like you bear. You don't want void. Like void lord is a liability at times because of the void walkers. I don't think that you can afford to dilute yourself with the uh, three threes. Like, right. that's, that's I, I don't know if I'm, me. I don't know if I'm that worried about it. Like in, in that, where it's just like it's just more threats, more threats, more better. And I mean, okay, we can go ahead and three threes just, threats. In combina- like constant three threes that you know can be buffed with Mulganis. Like I, I think of this as just, I don't know. I always find myself like Q block. <laughs> Weird as it is, now that it doesn't run cubes actually can run out of threats against stuff like even Rena Lock. Um I don't know. I it, it does a lot that I think I'm gonna have to try it somewhere just because that that is a lot of text and a lot of stuff for six mana. Um I think I, I'm with Corb on this one. I think that where it in existing decks right now where it potentially fits is uh is a dark glare or hand or like pain lock type thing. I think that there's some potential for that um because like like you said there are games that go late you run out of, you do legitimately run out of threats rather quickly in there but another problem i see in, i see having potential is like the three threes kind of make your race dead worse too so it's like i don't know like i don't know that three threes are other than happy ghoul because you don't pay mana for him and because he's got that big grin on his face i don't know that um <laughs> like three threes are what win games right now just like the druid card, I will be opposite of you two, and I will be trying it out because mainly because it's I like it. What do you mean? What do you mean opposite? I like this card. Come on. You like it? All right. All right. Yeah, I just yeah, don't like, I really like it. <laughs> or even like. I mean, yeah. I mean, even look at it, no, but yeah. Uh, whatever. I don't want to stick around on this card too much. I like it though. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let's talk about her phylactery. This is Tamsin's phylactery, four mana shadow, legendary spell. Discover a friendly death rattle minion that has died this game. Give your minions its death rattle. Um, so there's obviously a lot of funky stuff you could do with this card. Um, I don't know. I was I was doing some cube block theory crafting, which is why I brought that up with Tamsin. But like giving all of your one threes or these three threes that you summon, you know, hey, when they die, you gain eight life, or they summon another five five, or they summon three one threes. Doesn't seem that bad, but you can also do some dumb things with albatross weasels. Uh, honestly, if you're playing an aggro warlock deck that makes a lot of tokens, just like, God, just shove a Lepernome in there, and then all of a sudden, this is like a, if they clear your board, they're taking 12 damage. Um, I don't know, you can do some dumb things with it. I don't know if any of those things are going to be competitive, but I'm excited to do those dumb things. Yeah, so how does this work with tokens? Does it only, like, does it, is it an aura effect, kind of like uh, Caverns Below, or does it add it to uh existing minions in your deck in your hand in your on your board like i assume it's just everything like an aura i think it gives the death battles to the specific minions that are on your board yeah yeah like if you if you play a fainted circle or something and then play this then uh all those little guys that are on board will get the death rattle okay then i hate this card right yeah um i yeah okay uh i'm excited to try it a little bit i guess sort of something funky like a a control um it's like a control annoying warlock with albatrosses like Mm -hmm. dirty rats albatrosses void call uh void call a void lord um with like fiendish circles and stuff like that like i can i can say something kind of fun uh with that just to be sort of like a weasel priest uh 2.0 but apart from that, I don't know. But that deck sounds kind of fun. Yeah, that's that's what I had in mind too. But like, that's at most seven. I mean, times you're shuffling. Or yeah, 
going. So it kind of feels bad that it's so limited for a legendary spell that costs four mana. I I don't know. I want more out of it, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm still I'll, gonna I'm gonna play it. But it's like yeah, it's. I I, I I'll be honest. I thought it cost three at first. Uh, at four, it's uh, things are getting real dicey at four. And you like you have to have a board, so that means you have to be winning for this to be at all relevant. Yeah. All right, we got another deck of chaos situation with these uh, these legendary spells. Um, as in the card sucks. Not that we're overrating it. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> Hollow Abomination. It's a five minute two a battle cry. Deal one damage to all enemy minions. If you honorable kill any of those minions, and gain those minions attack. Um, I, should we talk about this last epic card instead? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Move All on. Right. Let's talk about Sacrificial Summoner. Three mana, three, three. Battle Cry, destroy a friendly minion. Summon a minion from your deck that costs one more. So for those of you guys that are familiar with magic, this is like a one-time birthing pot effect or esque style of cards. Um, those cards are pretty powerful because you can kind of build your deck in a way to manipulate what you're pulling, right? And make sure that you're pulling something really, really powerful. Um, so Sacrificial Summoner, uh, oh, I mean... Obviously, I think it's going to take a little bit of brewing to figure out kind of how exactly to break this. I don't know if you guys have any ideas. I, don't know. I was thinking maybe maybe like Corridor Creeper um, with a, like, you have like Enhanced Dreadlord and other like Premium 8s and stuff. Um, that's pretty much the, the most of it. But I don't know. It's just like anything, to write, anything that you want to be able to cheat out that's kind of small. So Corridor Creeper is the big one um, that I think, but... Maybe there's one that I'm not thinking of. What about Void Caller on four, Sacrificial Summoner on five, to pull your Void Lord from your hand, and your Doom Guard from your deck? Insane. Mm. Great. Uh, but I, but it, like the the Card of Creeper thing is actually like pretty legit. Like like I well, mean that's how are we, you know cheating. How are we discounting it? Are we playing it in like a zoo deck? Uh, I mean, you kill card. off your opponent's stuff. You play a Defile, and all of a sudden your card will creep the customer. And then you play against an Ignite Major or a Hunter, and then your deck doesn't do anything? <laughs> um, I don't know. You chain out a Void Lord, and all of a sudden your uh, little Void Walkers die off, and then you can just do the Look, look I, I don't know. Maybe I'm <laughs> reaching. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think it's a really, really cool effect. I'm excited to see them like introduce this effect to Hearthstone, because uh, those are some of my favorite effects. Uh, in other card games, and I'm excited to see just exactly what we can do with this card. So if you guys have any ideas, let us know down in the comments below. All right, let's move on to our, our last class here. We've got Warrior. Uh, dude, I, I am so confused as to what these Warrior cards are because we have Freeze Warrior. What? <laughs> um, never words that I thought I would say. Let's start with Snowden. This is a three-mana Frost spell for Warrior. Destroy a damaged minion. Freeze all others. Uh, I mean, printing two Frost Novas in the same set, let's go. Uh, I My instinct is is that this is a very good card, but the decks that won it, like Odd Warrior or Dead Man's Hand, um, like this doesn't solve the issues for those decks, right, in the, in the current meta situation, but I think it is a very, very powerful card. What about you guys? It's exactly my thoughts as well. Like, this, this card doesn't is good for those decks but isn't what makes those isn't going to what make be what makes those decks good again all right and, and corp has no ideas here so let's talk about the uh the last card uh for warrior we got frozen buckler uh really really interesting card actually here is a two mana frost spell two mana gain 10 armor at the start of your next turn lose five um so this is great in combination with stuff like shield slam or reckless flurry uh, cards like that, and maybe some other s additional support pieces that we're going to see. Um, I don't know. I think this card's really, really cool. Uh, no pun intended, given that it is a frost spell, but um, mm. <laughs> I, unless there's some sort of combo that I'm missing, right? Um, maybe it works really, really nicely in that uh, Ash Tongue Silas Shield Slam deck with a, with a couple Emperor Thors and Ticks, but um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like a pseudo, pseudo Ice Block, right? Two mana gain 10. Hope you don't die. And then it doesn't really matter how much armor you have because they're probably dealing a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, you, you said there was like two Frost Novas. This is kind of like a Frost Nova. Like, like if you kind of squint, um, you know, you, you play it, your opponent keeps going face because they have to if they're an aggro deck, and then you don't end up losing the armor because you just lost it all anyway. So two mana gain 10 is pretty sick. Um, 
I'm sure there'll be some additional synergy probably for this. Um, maybe <laughs> along the lines of like heavy metal, which is kind of a fun one. Um, heavy metal, by the way, and I don't blame you if you can't remember, is like a six mana spell that summons a random card, uh, 10 for each like armor you have. So if you have like 10 armor, it'll get you a, a random 10 drop for six. Um, but yeah, very weird card, right? We're against like non board based decks. It is just an iron hide. Which is not good, <laughs> but two mana gain ten is pretty sick. So yeah, weird card. Yeah, I I am very intrigued to say the least of where Warrior's gonna go here because just looking at these two cards, it looks like some sort of controly or combo Warrior. Um, is what these two cards are fitting in. So I'm excited to see kind of the rest uh, of the set and see if we get any new toys. Um, and for those of you guys that are wondering, I saw these frost spells and I was like multicaster. Um, turns out Warrior doesn't have any other spell schools outside of Frost, by the way. So, um, outside of like the one fire spell they have with the with the portal or dragon's fire. So, so yeah, multicaster not a cool card. Um, but yeah, I mean, let, let's talk about some of these neutrals because uh, there are some pretty cool cards in here. Um, I mean, we should obviously start off with with Drek'thar and Vandar. So these are the two free legendaries that you get to pick one of. Um, don't worry if you picked Vandar, you can eventually get Drek'thar, or if you pick Drek'thar, you can eventually get Vandar. Um, when the set launches, you'll get those legendary quest lines that you always get. Um, and I believe if you complete all of those, you do get the other legendary. Um, and I believe you also get that golden, uh, if I read that correctly. So, I mean, Vandar, Drek'thar, I, I think in Wild, Drek'thar is kind of the better option by a far mile. Uh, Vandar, though, does allow you to do some pretty cool, fun things. Uh, so, Drek'thar... 4 mana, 4-4, four, four. if this costs more than every minion in your deck, summon two of them, so it's basically a neutral call to arms. Um, or recruit two specific minions out of your deck in the case of a PM Mage. Whereas Vandar is a 4 mana, 4-4, four, four. if this costs less than every minion in your deck, reduce their cost by 3. So very similar to uh, Frizz, Dragon, something, the, the 4 mana, 5-4 that reduce all the dragons in your deck by 2. So very similar yes. effect. This is a little bit better than that, right? Um, Drek'thar, Vandar, I mean... Drek'thar, I, I think we should just start with because of the APMH pandemic, epidemic that has swept wild NA ladder. I don't know if it's spreading to other um, other servers, but there is a ton of Drek'thar APMH on ladder, and it seems very, very good in that deck. For the Horde, man. For the Horde. Uh, absolutely. I mean, as a Horde uh, WoW player myself, I've betrayed um my roots and chose vandar because i thought he had a cooler um effect now i've got a little bit of fomo seeing all the sweet things drekthar is doing that isn't just like cheating out a bunch of aggro minions but i've Dude. been having a good time with vandar myself um even if he's he's very clearly the weaker card like that i knew that going in uh but i just thought it was a cooler effect and like i don't know I, I'm contractually obligated to choose the uh, the weaker card. That's just unfortunately uh, well, how things work for me. God, I got hit by um, Secret Hunter running this, and it hit, it hit like Cloak of Shadow, uh, Cloak uh, Cloaked Huntress, and then it hit me the next game, like back to back with a Mukla. Um, that's when I knew things had gone too far, and uh, Drek'thar was going to be defining the wild format for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I was I was playing a little bit of the hunter deck. You run you run the cl two cloak hunters and you run two injured blade masters. So yeah. you play this and it's like a four mana four four that summons two four sevens, which is really gross. I mean, it's, a, it's legit. Three, which, it's it's like yeah. a bonds in these decks. Like it's really mm -hmm. broken, and I can definitely see it being like what, the best card in multiple like high tier aggro decks or it, combo decks, I guess, with APM Mage. Um, like really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, I had yeah, somebody sucks being a lines player. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. I had somebody slam this in Pirate Warrior, pull a ship's cannon and a South Sea captain, and then kill me with the exact lethal damage. So that wow. was a good time. I'll have you know, though. Listen, listen to what you can do with Vandar Stormpike, though. So here's here's my. I, I built this deck on stream, which is a brave move to begin with, but I didn't have <laughs> the time to actually play it. So the concept is. You run Call to Adventure with Vandar Stormpike, which I've already done, is pretty reliable to get him into hand. But then you also run double Call to Arms. So you play the Vandar on curve for four oh. mana. Oh. 
then you follow that with a call to arms to pull things like Witchwood Grizzlies, uh, which are five. So you pull your five mana cards, Witchwood Grizzlies, Fell Reavers, um, and Talon Fordrain, who can fetch your highest cost card, which is Battlegrounds Battlemaster. So you follow up your call to arms that just pulled these disgusting piles of stats with a uh, Battlegrounds Battlemaster at a low cost. Conviction still playable with her. Smack your opponent in the head with uh, Fell Reavers. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm I'm really itching to play it. Uh, probably by the time this podcast is released, I'll be jamming games with that deck. That actually sounds really cool. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you could also run Drek'thar as a third copy of Calder Arms in regular Agro Paladin decks, but that doesn't sound nearly as exciting as yeah, what you just that's described. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the tiny brain version of what I just described. Like what, Quite literally, you... because they are tinier minions. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit sad that they made us only pick one, uh, but that's yeah. I've got a little bit of FOMO because yeah. like I'm seeing people do strong Drek'thar things, and I'm just like, man, I can't make content with this card because I don't actually have access to it. So I like thematically, it's really cool, but like practically, it, it kind of feels bad. Yeah, it's... yeah. Like I, I kind of like them going for this type of event, but I think they'll learn from this one because I, I think this is going to be a common complaint that uh, I kind of like what the other side is doing and yeah yeah all right i mean i think moving forward i think they both do have a lot of potential drekthar maybe a little bit more just because it lends itself towards those aggro decks that are you know generally a little bit stronger uh in general yeah. when it comes to the wild format because that's kind of what I, you want to be doing I, I, I mean drekthar is just far and away the better card i don't think that there's any <laughs> any any debate any <laughs> all right fair enough it's a neutral call to arms is basically what it is which is gross right like Okay. All right. Anyways. Yes. Um. All right. Let's talk about known private one mana one three honorable kill game plus two attack. Um. And big question mark. Aggro druid question mark. I don't really want to spend a ton of time on it. Um. So let's talk about knight captain. Uh. Five mana three three battle cry deal three honorable kill gain plus three plus three. That that is an arena card. Uh. Abominable lieutenant eight mana three five epic minion. At the end of your turn, eat a random enemy minion and gain its stats. Uh. So I've seen a lot of people giving me the big priest question mark uh in terms of this card my no initial way. instinct is no, no way because it has no taunt that. yeah no way people asked you that is what i was saying no no oh no they you always check do. my Twitch anytime you, people <laughs> oh, ask on. people at any time a card that has a, either a high mana cost the words resurrect or like a, anything people just immediately assume oh my god big priest like people were losing their minds over the uh the new priest quest line because it was going to make big priest broken um in in my twitch chat at least so like the same thing with the the amulet that was just released any card that like has even the slightest bit of synergy people lose their minds over <laughs> and they do run it they do run it i saw somebody running vandar i didn't understand it that that is that is like running dirty rat in your big priest list and only a I few mean, people it's are going to get that. <laughs> Play the clip. Play the clip. <laughs> oh, God. No. No, no, please. All right. Um, let's move on to uh, some of the other uh, cards that we got here. Ivis, the Forest Lord. One mana, one, one. Battle cry. Spend the rest of your mana and gain plus two, plus two. Rush, Divine Shield, or Taunt at random for each. Um, I'm going to let Corbett talk about this. Uh, yeah. So, Ivis, um, it's kind of really tricky to evaluate, like, if you're not mathing it out. <laughs> Um, but the, the big takeaways that I had is that this card is actually really, really bad, um, because it, it's basically unusable for four mana or less, right? Um, even at four mana, you're a 25% chance to just make, like, a 1-1 one, one with Rush, Divine Shield, Taunt. Um, so that's absolutely garbage. Um, and below that, uh, you're, like, at a 50% chance, like, if you play for three mana, it's 50-50 to, uh like just get the the buff or not so it, it, it's just really really weak even at five mana um it becomes a lot more acceptable where you start to get that like talon with a rush effect um which is barely okay but you're not getting like the card draw of the talon which is the best part so it's the type of card that it legitimately kind of only scales well by the time you get to seven or eight plus mana and at that point well you're, you're paying seven or eight plus mana so i mean that's how you should be looking at this card, um, not as just some flexible card that you can play at any stage. It's really only acceptable at like the very, very high mana cost. And so unless there's that uh, that sick 20 mana druid 
uh, Druid Wombo Combo coming along. I don't really see this one making it. And there are just better things you can do with 20 mana anyway. Um, for the sake of clarity, because there was some confusion initially, the um, it was confirmed by a dev that um, you cannot or you cannot double up on Rush, Divine Shield, or Taunt. That those are you you don't get those same uh, keywords anytime. But then some random guy on Twitter immediately told the dev that she was wrong. So I don't know. What yeah, that was weird. That yeah, I, I didn't. That, that he really kind of swayed me with that. Like I thought Cora would know what she was talking about, but now I'm asking questions. That that I, weirdly enough, like. The only reason I took notice, or the main reason I took notice, is that person leaves just the most bizarre comments on my YouTube videos. So it's like I've I've had strange encounters with that same person. So um, part for the course, I guess. <laughs> Online interactions are great. <laughs> yeah, love it. But, but love not it. my YouTube video viewers. You guys are the best. All right, I, I love you guys. All of you guys <laughs> that watch and comment and like every video. Um, I read the comments on these videos, Meowth. You don't, don't, don't. No, I, lo I love all of you guys. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, all right, let's talk about Spammy Arcanist. Five mana, three four minion. Battle cry. Deal one damage to all other minions. If any die, repeat this. Stop me if you've heard this before, but this looks like defile on on a minion. Yay! I, <laughs> I mean, it is five mana, but it is defile. So I, I. I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't think we should think about this as a worse defile. I think we should think about this as like a slightly, slightly worse Godfrey. Um, I am a little bit sad because if this sees a lot of play, people are actually going to start learning how to play around defile, which is sad because that means my Hey, that's my are... thing. <laughs> hey, I thought I was only allowed to do that. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, okay. Spammy Arcanist. Out, classes outside of Warlock because Warlock obviously is not going to want this because they have defile. So they have Godfrey. Um, how are we liking this card in something like Reno Shaman or uh, a slower warrior deck? Like any any of these slow decks that maybe just, you know, Defile is a busted card, so do we want to run a five-minute version of that? I think that uh, definitely a consideration in Reno Shaman. I think you can make an argument that Defile costs way too little. Like, you're, you're basically, this is Defile, and then you also played a spider tank that turn, which, like, the important part of that is that you played a Defile, um... <laughs> And so, like, you're just kind of okay that you uh, then, like, spent the rest of your turn playing a spider tank because you just played Defile in a class that doesn't have Defile. So I, I think it's good. Uh, it's uh, In particular, like, where I could see it immediately finding a home is just Reno Shaman did because, like, it does the thing that the deck does. Um, and, like, you're looking for more battle cry minions. I don't... I doubt it will be... Um, as strong as Defile because it's not two mana, which Defile should have never cost two mana. But at the same time, the community has been calling for like um, like a reprint of Defile for a, a long time because it's a beloved card, even if it is like incredibly broken and w like you know overtuned for what it was. It was still like a rewarding card um, that people know are never going to learn to play around. So don't worry about that. Like it's just like <laughs> people are going to play straight into it. That's how Hearthstone works. Um, I, I don't think that this will be as prevalent in Wild as it may be in Standard, because, like, I think that there could be a push for control archetypes coming back in Standard with some of these cards. Um, I don't know if we're just too far gone in Wild for that to <laughs> to be a thing, but, like, I don't know. I'm happy the card exists. Yeah, um, Defile is one of my favorite cards ever. As the as like an aggro noob, uh, as the notorious aggro noob saying that, um, I, I love Defile, like, and I'm very happy to see that type of effect reprinted. Um, with Spammy specifically, uh, like the first hour that this card was revealed, oh man, I was hyped. I was like, oh baby, Reno Shaman LPG Mage? Question mark. Like, we get some nice AOE for that deck. Any deck that's kind of like limited on spells, but wants to be a controlly deck, it seemed like a very natural fit for those type of archetypes, right? Um, but then I kind of became a lot lower on it, <laughs> like as the as the hours passed. Uh, I, I just think there's going to be a lot of difficulty in setting up the defile clears when you have to allocate so much mana. Um, I think the defile does actually scale a lot worse as the game progresses, but you don't really notice it because like it only costs two, right? And so like you can do a lot of stuff to set it up in the mid game, and then from the jump, it's always a threat. 
right? Turns two, three, four. Um, and so I think spammy Arcanist is actually much more awkward than people might think, um, just because, you know, you don't get that those cheap little minions that Warlock often has as well with, like, Cobalt Librarians, Tour Guys, Mistress, like, a lot of that kind of stuff lets you set up the Defiles very easily. Um, and at five mana, you don't really have that option with Arcanist, especially in decks like Shaman and LPG Mage. So, yeah, uh, happy to see this printed, but I don't actually think it's that good um, despite the fact that my initial impression was like very high on it in something like, like Reno Shaman, I had the exact opposite uh, like initial reaction. <laughs> or, like my, I, like I don't know. I looked at this card again. Meow started talking about the, like the greatness of, was defiled and it gave me some hope. And like I was initially where you are right now, and I've I've turned around on it. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna stay hopeful. <laughs> that this card is great in Reno Shaman. It's you you just you 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 have minions in that deck in the early game anyway, so you're like you, you use your attackers to set it up. Trust me, Corb, it'll be fine. Yeah. All right, this Don't. is the real this is the real split between uh, Alliance and Horde. <laughs> this is the Vandar Drexar all over again. Um, I also like it with Macaw in Reno Shaman. Like that's a really good synergy. Yeah, yeah, true. The the little two ones from Galakrond uh, can help set up. Yeah, I mean, I again, well. Add this to the list of, of controversial cards that are either going to be good or they're going to be really, really garbage. Um, we'll come back to this in, in three months and see how we did and whether the card's actually good. All right, so we're, we're going to move on to the next card. And before I do, um, I'm going to trigger warning for Raffle because what I'm about to say is about to make him mad. Uh, but F's in the comments for uh, for Ren Blackhand. Uh, he finally got power crept. Uh, the poor, poor guy never got to see the light of day. Um, has been power crept by a uh, neutral epic minion. Uh, three mana, four two, Grim Totem Bounty Hunter. Battle cry, destroy an enemy legendary minion. Don't even have to be holding a dragon. Feels bad, but uh, nah. No, no. Little tech card. Oh, you uh, you completely misread the situation, Meowth. I um, I have officially taken the red pill, um, which is a phrase that made me vomit a little bit in my mouth, even. Um, and yeah and now i have joined uh the brigade i demand justice not only for ren blackhand but also hemet nessenwary hemet nessenwary i can't even say his name i'm so infuriated who was power crept in the previous expansion like what is the point of these cards blizzard give me my 600 dust refund for these cards that i do not have that's it destroy a legendary 2014 destroy a legendary 2021 unbelievable Oh, dude, Twitter draft right now. Posted it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, okay, but yeah, like, let's actually get into the card because yeah. I played a lot of red with like three mana BGH in the classic. And God, that felt very satisfying. And I think like this has many, 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 many more targets, um, especially in a deck that's like in a format that's often defined by quest lines. Um, and like most decks just happen to play legendaries, like legendaries are just pretty good. So. It's pretty active. Like I can see this becoming a very common inclusion in things like Reno Warlock, but um, which yeah. which I think might would probably be playing like three mana BGH if it was still three mana um, in like a Reno Warlock deck. So yeah, I mean it's a tech card. It, it'll be what overplayed, but it might it be useful at some point. So it, here's it, it, can, it doesn't it doesn't have to hit anything specific, right? Like there are just random legendaries that pop up in almost every deck. Um, it doesn't have to be this big thing. Yeah, here's what it can do. You play it in your Reno Shaman. Um, and then, like, you also have uh, Serenite Chain Gang in your Shutterwalk pool. So when you play the Shutter, uh, the Chain Gang goes first, the Grim Bounty Hunter goes second, and then Zola goes third and whiffs. And, like, it's beautiful. No, 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 no. Hey, no. Destroy an enemy. Enemy. Yeah, re like, reading uh... the card explains the card. <laughs> nope. Hey! No, I, re I refuse to read yeah, cards. Okay. I was too busy going on my rant. How dare okay. you? How dare <laughs> yeah. you take away from Dude, my you're, you're still so so outraged. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm heated. The moment yeah. you said Shutterwalk, I knew exactly where you were going, and I was like, he hasn't read the card. I, I know exactly <laughs> where this is going. <laughs> Why am I going to read this card? Like, <laughs> I, I was I mean, too busy reading Ren Blackhand because I forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you happy playing this? It's like a three mana four two that kills a Zeph or kills a Patches. What if it kills a five drop or a six drop? Like patch is probably not. No, like it's not amazing. I mean, but then but... at that point, I'd rather have the BGH because it also hits giants against the even locks. This hits Lotheb. 
Yeah. Mm. Like l- fair. Like there, there are a lot of this random legendaries. Like even something like Benedictus, or I, I don't know. I'm just thinking of like random situations where it, uh, I thought seven man Benedictus, and I was like, "What are you talking about, Corey?" <laughs> <laughs> I think if your yes. opponent is Shadow Priest and they play a Benedictus, <laughs> you're just kind of happy that that happened because you're still alive. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Okay, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I'm not doing enough of a sell job on this no, card. I got to work I, harder to convince. I think I think we'll see. I think that I I think you're right <laughs> that there are more legendaries that are relevant that we're not like considering, and this could have some value. I don't know if that means it's worth running in your deck though. So we'll we'll it's it's a wait and see card. I mean, it's a tech card, so it'll be very played, like, a lot, all the time. Oh, God, I'm, I'm ready to lose to this already. All right, yeah. uh, let's talk about the last epic here that we've got. We've got Pops a Cooler, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, mech. Death Rattle, freeze two random enemy minions. I really wish this wasn't a Death Rattle, but uh, alas, it is a Death Rattle, which makes it a lot worse. Um, It makes me not really ever want to play this in our format. I, I just want to play it because it's got beautiful adorable art uh but yeah, if it's it gonna were, look pretty if it were a battle cry it would just be outrageous so it's good that it's a death rattle but at the same time it sucks that it's a death rattle <laughs> true all right yeah. let's move on to our, our legendary here uh we've got lock Kolar. i'm sure i'm butchering that name the ice lord this is a 10 minute 8 8 elemental with russian wind fury not super exciting on its own until you read the last part of the text cost five less if you have 15 health or less so then it becomes a five minute eight eight with russian wind fury i mean it's like even locks and even arena locks didn't get enough support uh last expansion so here's another another toy for us to play with i don't even know if we want it in the deck but i mean i'm gonna play it because it's a new card in the deck uh i mean seems pretty good right five minute eight eight with rush wind fury seems pretty good to me is there some cool lore about this one ruffle yeah i was just looking it up to remind it it's um so if you collect enough resources uh, on either side, um, you could summon one of these. I believe, and this is what I was looking to confirm, yeah, this is the one that the Horde summons, and Ivis is the one that the um, the Alliance summons, I believe. So, yeah, I think that the Horde is going to win in Alteric Valley <laughs> this time around because they got Drek'thar, who is better, and... Uh, this looks way better than uh, Ivis as well. Uh, actually, it looks like Ivis is maybe not. Maybe I'm misremembering. I, I don't know. I just based it off of the name. I re- definitely remember um, Lock Holar um, in Alteric Valley. Uh, so I, I could be misremembering things, but um, there there is an, uh, the, a Horde and Alliance counterpart of each of these. And um, basically, they summon you. Have, they kind of interrupt your progress in the pvp it's an elite mob that you have to take down before you can uh, really do much else man we need that uh battlegrounds battle master give mega wind fury synergy that's what we need <laughs> with this card um no like it's pretty good i think uh especially in even look like yeah it doesn't cost zero mana and that sucks but i mean five mana rush wind fury eight eight like it's super high immediate impact on board and incredibly threatening the following turn. Um, like, what are you really doing for five mana that's much better than this in, like, an even lock? Like, I doubt you're really doing that much better. And also, like, another, another small thing, the, like, the mana allocation can be a little bit uh, awkward on turn five and stuff because um, you often like tap into Mountain Giant and then you kind of don't tap on turn five just with like the full hand if you play a Mountain Giant on four. Um, and so, yeah, you don't really like waste that mana very much. But yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, when I first saw this card, I completely missed the win- the Wind Fury aspect of it. And I'm just like, why is everybody overreacting to this card in even <laughs> Because it's like, yeah, five, five, five mana, eight, eight rush, pretty good. But like, I don't think that's what you need. And then I was like, oh, right. It has Wind Fury too. So yeah, that's just a good quality card. Let's, yeah. 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 yeah nothing super flashy, but I think just a solid card for those decks that obviously didn't get enough support in United and Storm. And so I'm very glad that they're giving Thank some God. love to these underplayed, uh, underpowered decks. Um, the, the Warlock main in me is showing. I mean, that being said, that is 46 cards that we have talked about in two hours. I am surprised that we actually got it in in two hours. So doing pretty well for ourselves. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't want to spend too much more time because we have been going for a while. 
uh, just leave it on kind of one last comment. I mean, how are these cards looking to you guys? Do they look powerful? Are you excited? Uh, what What is the general vibe about Alterac Valley so far? I'm excited that it seems that they're printing interesting cards that are powerful but seem to be slower um, than what we saw in United and Stormwind. So my concern, though, is that I think just because of the, like the the nature of the way Hearthstone plays, it's always rewarded um, winning the board early and you know kind of in general faster more proactive strategies um so of when you know slowed cards are of equal power i just don't know that they're enough to i don't know that these cards are necessarily enough to overtake the ground that's been gained with some of the fast uh strong cards that have been printed uh recently in particular some of the inevitability that uh we've been talking about with quest lines like uh, you know the value of guff is never fully going to be realized because like games don't make it to where you can get to 20 mana um you know the um the immovable object or whatever for um burial isn't going to stop infinity damage or um or and even like you said it's may not even stop like the relentless nature of uh the the quest line hunter so that's my concern the cards are it's certainly very cool. I'm just like, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there's this very deliberate approach with this set um, to try and push these slow strategies, whether you are looking at the Lifeforge Carriol as like a sort of a slowdowning of, you know, late game combo, or just like these freeze effects that we're seeing pop up in Shaman and Warrior, these big minions popping up in like Demon Hunter. Um, so they, they are like pushing this approach in general. Uh, I like a lot of the cards they do seem to be highly synergistic like for the there seems to be like a lot of support for these archetypes they're going after um at least what we've seen so far like we've only seen but it's in about a third of the stuff but i'm already kind of looking at things like frost Saber matriarch as like a beast support in, in druid and i'm already excited to try and build around that uh as an example so i really like it uh i like that the the hero cards um, are powerful as long as they don't become a situation where they feel like whichever player draws the hero card first wins. I, I didn't like that aspect of Frozen Throne very much, where they were entirely based around sort of the randomness of draw order, which is the opposite of what we've seen with the quest lines. I've kind of liked the quest line meta in, in a lot of what we've seen in this latest expansion. So it's time, though. It's time. It's time that we see decks that aren't quest lines. Uh, in both wild and standard, so I really hope we get some other stuff. But again, we're only third in, so we have a long way to go. Yeah. All right. So obviously, we're not going to make any predictions about decks and stuff like that. But I, I am excited for these. Um, like Corvus kind of alluded to earlier, there were some comments about they are aiming for a slower meta. Um, and obviously, in standard, if quest lines continue to dominate, I am sure that they will step in and make changes to those quest lines in standard. Um, so time will tell, obviously, if they <laughs> that impacts Wild. Um, but man, I'm really hoping that like United and Stormwind did a lot to the Wild format, and I'm hoping that it doesn't overshadow a lot of the cool cards that you guys have been talking about uh, here in Alterac Valley. I <laughs> there are a lot of cool cards. I, like Raffle, I do have my my reservations about will any of them see play because like I don't know if any of them beat Pirate Warrior, Odd Hunter, or stuff like that. But obviously, that is not something that we can predict until we actually play with the cards. So that being said. I do agree with you guys that there are a lot of really, really cool synergistic cards that I'm excited to play with. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I, I think with that, I don't think we should spend any more time. I think we should go ahead and thank everybody that has listened all the way to the end of this card review. Really do appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. And uh, Raffle and Corvus, as usual, thank you so much for uh, for sticking with me another week. Appreciate you guys. Uh, and let the people know where they can find you guys. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at RaffleHS and uh, Twitch and YouTube at Raffle. And you can find me at Corbett Games on all those platforms. And thank you guys for, for watching slash listening. You can find me at Get Me Out on all those platforms as well. I uh, just want to reiterate, thanks for listening all the way to the end of a, of a super long episode. Always enjoy the card reviews. Uh, and let us know down in the comments below whether you think we're wrong, right, missed, misevaluated some cards, or you're pretty damn scared or excited about some of these cards as well. Appreciate you guys again for listening all the way through. And we'll see you guys again next week. Later.